scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. And um, let's start with this tonight. What I have to teach tonight is very powerful. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Can you read? If you can see it, please read. One to read. And now, brethren, uh -huh, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. You can be among those who are sanctified, but not built and without any evidence of your inheritance. The Bible says that a man can be commended first to God and then to the word. In this case, he calls it the word of his grace. The word of his grace being the word that is able to provide and make manifest in your life all the multifaceted possibilities that are resident in the Christ. The Bible says the word of his grace can achieve two things in your life. The word of his grace that is able to, number one, build you up. Everybody say, build you up. And then number two, to deliver to you. Now, notice how the word of God, I really want you to understand this scripture. Notice how the word of God works. It does not start by giving you an inheritance. It starts by working on you. So that when you sustain that capacity, then there is nothing God is unable to give you. Many times we desire things physically and spiritually that we do not have the spiritual, psychological, and physical stamina to receive. Are we together now? Yes. This, this podium is resting on a casted ground. It has the ability to take the weight of this, so there's no trouble. Your seat was designed with your weight in mind. Are we together now? So your sitting on that seat is not a threat at all. It is able to take you. But you cannot carry this speaker, for instance, and drop it on certain seats. It will break. So the Bible says that the word of God scans your life and looks at the magnitude of spiritual inheritance to be given to you. And then it starts by building you until you rise to that level in the spirit where no weight of spiritual substance on you can break you then it delivers to you are we together now so this is already a word of encouragement so that if nothing is being delivered to you as it were you are not discouraged because you know that it means capacity is being built are we together many times services like this are not just times of receiving things it may be times of building it is not always that something is just given like you receive something a substance many of us just want something we can receive and run with if it is god he gives gifts according to his riches there is nothing god gives a man that is small and so when god delays in giving you it is because he's allowing your capacity to be able to retain are we together yes very powerful it is not enough to receive you must sustain an ability to retain because you can lose something that god gives you the bible is full of things that were once given to men and taken back 
so god is able to take advantage of his word to build me and build you and then when we gain that stature in the spirit then deliver to us an inheritance among them that are sanctified let your word come and bless us O oh god in the name of jesus let me encourage you again i say this to you from the depth of my heart and i say this to you in all truthfulness and i say this to you with all audacity if you listen to the truths that i teach you you will never fail it's true leave your situation and the pride around it don't mind it focus on the truth you are listening to and see how forcible right words are the bible says how forcible there is a force that right words when you receive it can exert on your situation until it bends and glorifies the lord so tonight please take your eyes away from what you are trusting god to do or what has not been done just focus on the word the worst spirit in my opinion demonic spirit now is not death death is just the last enemy not the worst the worst spirit is not the spirit of infirmity that causes sicknesses now the worst spirit listen carefully is not even demonic attack dreaming of somebody chasing you up and down the worst spirit is the spirit that can cause blindness in your understanding the bible says it is able to make even the word of god unfruitful that the god of this world has an assignment to create a system of blindness over the minds of the people so that they are not open to the glorious gospel it is the worst state a man can be in not sickness not failure not poverty none of these things in themselves destroy it is our attitude around them that empowers them to destroy us but blindness whether you do something about it or not it will destroy you blindness every time jesus saw blind people he was very he was intentional about their healing blind people are mad people these two categories anything that affects your eyes and your mind is truly demonic are we together there are people doing exploits in the world today without hands there are people doing exploits today without the ability to speak there are people who do not have limbs and are doing all sorts of things but you will seldom find a madman do anything that is impactful there are people who can even you know just rise above the limitations of blindness but you look at their lives and you know that it is not easy when god opens your eyes and opens your mind is a true miracle are we together now i was sharing i can't remember where now um, i think it was one of the departments i do not know that i was having a meeting with them and then i was sharing with them how that a man is not truly delivered until he receives grace that gives him passion for the word any man that rejects the word is oppressed even if he does not see any spirit in his life you don't have to have a dream of a demon chasing you the moment there is a resentment for the wisdom of the word it is it a sign that your life is acutely under an attack are we together blessed be the name of the lord and so as the word of god comes please i i challenge you to open up your heart see it as the word of his grace that is coming to you regardless of what the limitations are pay attention to the word they looked unto him and they were not ashamed their faces were lightened looking at your situation will not change anything but if you look to the word the word has a force that the anointing follows the word not a man the anointing looks like it is following a man because that man is following the word are we together now
the anointing does not follow men the anointing follows the word blessed be the name of the lord be fruitful write it down that's our topic for tonight be fruitful if i were you i would say amen, amen. Hmm. open our eyes in the name of jesus let the word of god change us genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 we're reading to 28 the lord declared this year by his spirit that is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness and my assignment is to guide us by the spirit on the principles allocated um, for our fruitfulness our productivity and our efficiency in the kingdom and tonight we're dealing with something very very important genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 and elohim said let us make man so man is the subject here after our in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea the fowl of the air the cattle over the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth 27 so god created man in his own image in the image of god created him male and female created he them 28 and god blessed them and god blessed them the bible didn't say and god discussed or he said to them please listen and god blessed them and said unto them some other version say and god blessed them saying so he routed the blessing through words but the blessing are not words the vehicle for communicating them is just a word he can choose to use any other mechanism remember he's god and god blessed them and said to them first instruction be fruitful and multiply not or multiply be fruitful that means fruitfulness is not the same as multiplication are we together when the bible says something or something it means either of the two holds the same value but now he's saying be fruitful then in addition to fruitfulness multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it then he says have dominion etc etc so tonight we're picking one be fruitful and we want the lord to open our eyes and to understand god's idea of fruitfulness colossians chapter 1 verse 9 and 10 praise the lord colossians chapter 1 verse 9 and 10 for this cause we also paul is speaking since the day we heard of it do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye be filled with the knowledge of his will and in all wisdom and spiritual understanding verse 10 that ye might walk worthy of the lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of god being fruitful not in some in every good work hallelujah so we see from scripture that fruitfulness is a command fruitfulness is a command in fact jesus demonstrated in his own earth work how much he resented on fruitfulness once upon a time the bible tells us that jesus was on his way back and he saw a fig tree and that the tree had green leaves in other words it was attracting his attention but coming to the tree he discovered that there were no figs and jesus not a prophet that is still being renewed not an apostle in the making jesus himself looked at the tree and cursed the tree and said that no fruit will come out of you again and by the next day they came and discovered that it had withered right from the root so god is passionate about fruitfulness are we together please write this down to be fruitful means to increase to increase to be fruitful means to be productive fruitfulness entails increase fruitfulness entails productivity fruitfulness entails enlargement and expansion i 
are we together fruitfulness entails evidence evidence you are fruitful to the degree to which your life can produce evidence what evidence evidence of the faithfulness of god evidence of the investment of god upon your life evidence of the supremacy of the word in your life why do we need to be fruitful it's important we know let me just address that because we have a lot to deal with why do i need to be fruitful because you know there are christian circles today well-meaning that think subjects like this should not be the believers should not be bothered with the subject of fruitfulness why because most times when we talk of fruitfulness all they think about is money and physical things they just look at fruitfulness um, in terms of affluence physical and material blessings and then they convince themselves that anyone can live without them and then they assume that all those things are distracting but the bible says we need to be fruitful in every good work every good work every good work are we together why do we need to be fruitful john chapter 15 and verse 8 we'll still make reference to that scripture but please go with me very quickly to john 15. i pray that god opens your eyes to understand this once and for all mm. verse 8 herein is my father glorified when you bear much fruit how is the father glorified when you bear much fruit when you bear much fruit when a man pays the school fees of his son and the son returns back with a report card and says daddy out of 90 students i took number one and my average is 91 i am doing well that child is fruitful that child justifies the investment of the school fees are we together but on the flip side if the child returns back with a report card and is written there need to see the parent and zero from top to bottom is that child fruitful no that the father is angry for many reasons one he's angry because he's the father are we together just being the father alone is enough to upset him the owner of this child that is carrying this shape are we together two because his resources a symbol of his energy was committed into that boy's life so the bible says the father is glorified when we justify his giving us the holy spirit when we justify his giving us his wisdom his favor remember our scripture here that has become an anthem when god makes all grace to abound towards you he expects fruitfulness in other words he in his mind he does not see that there should be an excuse in your life because all grace has been well coordinated towards you if you're with me say amen, amen. the father is glorified when the saints bear fruit all kinds of fruits number two bearing fruit also inspire and encourage you most people do not know that when they bear fruit their, their own spiritual lives also continue to grow spiritual barrenness is very dangerous and barrenness in every regard is dangerous biologically speaking when people experience any kind of barrenness it's not something that is received with gladness it's something that challenges them can even destroy their marriage so we know for sure that any form of barrenness calls for action are we together now yes hearing is my father glorified but then god gives you consolations that my life is producing fruits producing fruits producing fruits the third reason why we need to bear fruits is because our fruitfulness is a message to the world that god is true our fruitfulness is a witness that can cause men to believe in god very important john chapter one please and verse six john chapter one john chapter one and verse six our fruitfulness there was a man sent from god the bible says whose name was john seven 
the bible says he the same came for a witness what was his assignment to bear witness of the light that through his witness all men might believe so when you are fruitful through your witness men might believe god is depending on men to believe in him but their faith is routed through your results are we together now that means that there is a dimension of my result and your result that has the capability has the ability to make men believe god if it is true that we are passionate about seeing his glory revealed then we must truly desire to be fruitful to the end that men look at our lives the last verse galatians 1 yes 24 and they glorified god in me galatians 1 24 and they glorified god not just through me in me and they glorified god not they glorified me and they glorified god in me are we together gentiles need to see the light the results the evidences of god's hand upon our lives let me tell you something my brothers and my sisters results are a language it is true when you bear fruit even fruit that abides it is a language that speaks to creation about the faithfulness of god it is a language that attracts creation to the one true god the source of all lifting so god is passionate about our bearing fruit mighty god settle it once and for all that god is glorified in my fruitfulness settle it once and for all that god is glorified in my fruitfulness when i am fruitful when i am productive when my life begins to produce evidences that god is glorified let me tell you something about fruitfulness you can say the same thing without fruit and say the same thing with fruit and the impact will be east and west fruitfulness makes your words heavy when you have results your words are worth believing the words of a fruitful man are seldom contended with when people speak from a standpoint of results there is a compelling conviction that it brings to you and so if we want creation to subscribe to this life that we so propose day and night telling them jesus is the way the truth and the life telling them that he is the one who can lift men god is counting on our lives to be able to produce that message and in the name of jesus he will find he will find a real witness in you yeah. be fruitful is a command in the loins of prophecy when god was looking at adam and prophesying he saw joshua selman he saw koinonia and he said be fruitful in other words i forbid barrenness i forbid barrenness i forbid barrenness in your life be fruitful but like every other mystery in the kingdom there are there are we are mandated to understand the spiritual systems like i've always taught you uh, that our results depend upon i've taught you again that between your desire and the manifestation there are spiritual systems that connect them are we together i've told you the prophetic speakings of god that when god speaks he does not speak as though he's talking to a man he speaks as if he's talking to himself and so some factors will not be captured in his speakings it will take the spirit of revelation to break what god has said down so that you now see how you connect to that word god can look at you and say where is the house and you are sitting down wondering and say god who are you talking to and then he says i'm talking to myself you see that it is the spirit of revelation that will break that down so that you begin to understand that god does not speak like men knowing how god speaks is very powerful and it is a spirit of revelation that can help you and help you understand the communications of god 
Are you with me tonight? Yes. So there are mysteries, secrets, principles, you can call them, allocated for fruitfulness. Wishing fruitfulness is a waste of time. Just having a strong desire for fruitfulness is a waste of time. It may be beneficial for a while because at least it can draw you to the secret place where you create the atmosphere for the spirit of revelation. According to Proverbs 18 and verse 1, it says, Desire through desire, a man having separated himself, it says he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. But that in itself does not make you fruitful. There is a lot of superstition in the body of Christ. Ask the average Christian, do you believe in results, fruitfulness, productivity? He or she will say yes. And then you ask them, how is it going to happen? Then you will hear the variety of ignorance expressed through many well-meaning words. But the bottom line is, I don't know. Some will say Jesus will do it. And it looks very right just because the name of Jesus is in part of that that erroneous statement jesus would do it others would say i will work hard i will do my best we are called to walk circumspectly everybody says circumspectly i told you that in a man's dealings with god creativity is almost not needed it is obedience it is when it has to do with dominion and kingdom legislature that is where your creativity comes the principles that make for your greatness are not left for your guessing they are there listen please when you get this you will stop wasting your time trying to crack your brain to know god trying to crack your brain to get truth no truth is not an idea it's not just the function of the mind you don't reason truth it is revealed there is a body of knowledge allocated for your results are you getting what i'm saying now yes if i have this bottle of water it's already there my assignment is to find it not to try to look for a way of 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 refining water and all of that and and and, and purifying it no it's already there this is how truth is don't think that truth is like many ideas that you crack your brain to just download no it is given and received otherwise it is not there if it is truth then it's not subject to the ideas of men. It's something that comes from God. If you get this, you will be restful. Your assignment is to create the atmosphere for that truth to come. Lord, what are the keys towards my fruitfulness? And you remain there. Waiting like a waiter. And the spirit of revelation comes. And when it comes upon you, the secret is revealed he says then the secret was revealed unto daniel listen every truth in the kingdom is revealed 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 every truth in the kingdom is revealed if it is truth then it was revealed whether the custodian of that truth admits that it was revealed or not the bottom line is that it was revealed so all of the spiritual activities that you go through for truth to come is only preparing the atmosphere for truth to come if the spirit of revelation does not bring you truth my brother and my sister you will end up conjuring sophia human wisdom ideas that cannot stand the test of time you can think ideas you can read books here and there and connect things but truth is revealed are we together And the Lord showed me something very powerful. And that's what I want to share with us. The mystery of fruitfulness is enshrined in a very silent parable that I want us to deal with right now. Hmm. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Luke chapter 8. Mighty God, open our eyes and help us see wherever we stop tonight we'll pray luke chapter 8 we're reading the first 15 verses look at this we call it the parable of the sower it's not the parable of the sower it's a kingdom mystery hidden in a story and kept only to be revealed by the spirit of revelation just because you read this 
does not mean you will have an understanding now you can give a theological explanation as to what you think was happening you can even write a book about it but my brothers and my sisters this is sealed until it is open you will never see what is there are we ready now so let's read it came to pass afterwards that he went throughout every city and village jesus now preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of god and the 12 were with him verse 2 and certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities mary all of that together they went with him verse 3 um okay so you know the bible is just giving us the setting now of all of this i think it starts from verse 4 and when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city he spake but he spake by a parable he communicated but he used a parable to hide the secret what is the parable verse 5 a sower a sower went out to sow his seed follow the story a sower no name he went out to sow his seed so whoever this sower is we know that the sower was desiring fruitfulness are we together nobody just goes to sow seeds just because he feels like throwing seeds so one the sower had seeds number two the sower was a sower are you getting what i'm saying now listen a sower went out to sow his seed and as he sowed it's amazing that everything that happened by the wayside and the rest was called sowing it was not a mistake as he sowed some fell by the wayside listen and it was trodden down and the fowls of the air devoured it two some fell on a rock and as soon as it was sprung up it withered away because it lacked moisture and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it and other fell on good ground so we know that they didn't just fall that falling is sowing because even on the good ground it uses the same word so it's not like the seed maybe a bag with holes and then it fell until it got to the good ground no he sowed there is a soil called the wayside and he sowed there and he watched what happened now the first thing we have to be thankful for is that god did not hide the failures of this sower otherwise we would have been deceived about fruitfulness the bible gives us the complete story of the struggles of this sower to the end that we may have a balanced understanding are we still together let's continue our story the bible says an order fell on good ground and it sprang up and bear fruit an hundredfold and when he had said these things he cried jesus started crying imagine that as i'm teaching you now i just finished then i, I pause and i start crying when the bible says he cried in many regards he really cried it's not just that he lifted his voice loud he really cried why did he cry he that had ears to hear let him hear how can you finish talking to people my brothers and my sisters this is jesus adult jesus not the child learning something in the temple and you stand and teach people and then start crying do you know why because we're saying wow jesus are you this smart and jesus said oh dear Jesus was revealing through this story what was happening as he was teaching. It was not just something that happened one day alone. He was crying because there was a repetition of that story real time as he was talking. He being the sower. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. Let's go back to verse 5 now. There are certain informations that we really, really need to believe and understand about this to help our fruitfulness. I, I just thought to explain this parable. Notice that Jesus was so passionate about this parable, he didn't allow any human being to interrupt the interpretation. 
he said i will interpret it myself there are many times he would not interpret certain parables he would just leave them but this one he says so that there is no confusion i will explain and in many times jesus will leave some details out in explaining a parable but this one every single detail was explained to tell you his level of passion let's go to verse 9 let's finish and then we'll come back to verse 5 go to verse 9 and his disciples asked him saying what might this parable be are we ready now let's hear Jesus interpret his own parable and he said unto you hallelujah it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God this is how he started interpretation Jesus interpreted now and I said, leave that matter. The reason why I will interpret this to you is because that thing you see is a coded message. But unto you, it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to others in parables that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not understand. Every time the Bible uses hearing twice, the second hearing is understanding. Are we together now? Next verse. Now, the parable is this i love jesus now the parable is this number one the sower the seed is the word of god mm. the seed is what not a business idea we are talking fruitfulness here the seed is not an investment plan listen carefully the seed that produces that harvest is the word of god number two those by the wayside are they so those soils are people listen carefully people who have hearts the wayside are people the rocks all of that they they are different states of people's hearts notice the goal is to produce result but everything is happening inside a man's heart it just uses a farm to explain the entire labor of that fruitfulness is happening within the man, not outside the man. Are we together tonight? It says, those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts. Are we together now? Out of their hearts, not out of their life. He did not touch anything external. He just came into their hearts, removed the seed of the word of God, and left every other idea there. He didn't tamper with their ideas. They didn't tamper with all their plans. He just carried the word factor and left every other thing. And the Bible says, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they, which when they hear, they receive the word. So they are an improvement to the first set. The set, the first set just heard, but the second set heard and received the word with joy. Remember what the Bible says about joy. It says they fulfill the spiritual law here with joy. And then the Bible says, and these have no root. Which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. Next verse. And that which fell among tongues are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked. The first set heard. The second set heard, received, added joy. The third set heard and took action. Are you seeing now? All an improvement to themselves. And were choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection that means they started bearing fruit but the fruit could not mature the last set 15 but that on the good ground are they look look at look at this look at this they are they which in an honest and good heart having heard the word keep it and bring forth more fruit with patience they are not creative people what made them good was honesty that they had an honest and a good heart and by that honesty they were given an ability to keep it and the bible says they produce fruit for jesus is teaching on fruitfulness now let me tell you this kingdom mysteries are very foolish and childish they were designed that way 
so that you have to be like a child to understand their operations and that is the reason why many people never become fruitful and never get results because of the simplicity and the childlike character of spiritual communication are we together now look at this i am very grateful to god that the sower himself was not mentioned the bible never told us who the sower was so the sower could be anybody the bible tells us what the seed was and the soils the reaction how they were planted and the results are you getting what i'm saying now now watch this very carefully do you know that we need to congratulate this sower first for his patience and endurance because whoever this sower was it is true that he had to survive a lot when you plant a seed and then it dies then you go to another soil and it improves a little then you go to another soil and it improves a little the bible is very careful to let us see the transitions of this man and saying that all of it is part of an equation that can be captured in, on your journey to fruitfulness the same sower continue to do this until he got to a point what was the difference my brothers and sisters between the wayside and a hundredfold returns the wayside once upon a time now a benefactor of a hundredfold returns every soil was a description of a level of development and the corresponding challenges that would stop that man listen the first we see in the life of that person the wayside according to jesus's own interpretation was a revelation of extreme carelessness you can know that whoever was the possessor of that heart condition was a careless person are we together now there was no discipline at all for the devil to you only enter a man's house and freely pick something without him unnoticed if the doors are not closed there is no system of guidance he did not place value on the information and there are people like that all over the world the moments the word of god comes to bless them they 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 are sympathetic to what the preacher is saying and they hope they are understanding but quite honestly they do not mind whether the information is lost or not it has not become precious and valuable they have not seen the usability of that information and so the press to guard and to protect is not there are we together yes. you only protect what you have value for if you do not have value for it you may not protect it when you finish eating your biscuit in a in a um the the uh, what they call it now the the sachet or so you throw that thing inside a dustbin why because it doesn't mean anything for you again listen my brothers and my sisters forget about true success and fruitfulness if the word of god and the truths delivered do not mean a lot for you you have to get to a point where you have a desperation a hunger and a thirst for truth remember that we prosper according to the third epistle of john according to the prosperity of our souls and the bible says that the end of your faith is the salvation of your soul the renewal the transformation of your mind are we together let me digress a, 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 a little bit and let's go back to our Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly. So God's ability here is not in doubt. The Bible says he is able to do. To be able means to be capable. To be able means it is within your power and it is within your jurisdiction. The Bible says he is able to do abundantly above all that we ask or think. Let's hold it there. Ask or think. I've explained it here. When you say ask or think, that means your asking and your thinking carries equal value in the spirit. That both your asking and your thinking are both prayer requests that rise to God. Your asking can be saying, God, bless me. And your thinking, say, God, I just changed my mind. Don't waste your time again. 
and that both of them are prayers that can rise to God. The Bible says God is able to do what we ask or do what we think. The thought realm was where the entire story in the parable of the sower was. It, it was an interaction in the soils of their hearts and their minds. Notice that when in the interpretation of those things very little was talked about their hands and any physical energy it was an activity of their minds that determined their failure or their success and even the extent of the success the deliverance that comes through transformation is a much needed deliverance in africa is a much needed deliverance around the middle belt around the north we need a radical shift in our perceptions and in our understanding otherwise we will continue to mock and flatter ourselves and never give room for the fullness of the glory and the power of god to manifest ask someone what do you think is the key to lifting and rising the next thing they begin to tell you all kinds of stories they tell you get a good job they tell you do a good business others will tell you find a good relationship you know somebody who is a destiny helper etc etc those things only matter when these foundational things are in place listen my brothers and my sisters the beginning of your success is when the word of god arrives in your heart and in your mind not when you get a job the starting point of all fruitfulness is the arrival of the word that lives and abides forever your heart and your mind write it down please your heart and your mind a major part of your fruitfulness happens there the manifestation the manifestation is something that can happen suddenly Man of God, listen to me. Businessman, listen to me. Career person, listen to me. The external factor plays a very, very, very small role in your overall success. You are a reflection of the prevailing power of the world within you. You are a reflection of the, the maturity of the word of God in your heart and in your mind your heart and in your mind that means that the word of god alters your perceptions the principles of the word of god have gained entrance into your mind i'm more concerned about the mind part because that is where the stronghold of demons the stronghold of territorial limitations dwell many times when the devil wants to keep people fruitless do you know what he does he makes sure that the word of God cannot get to their mind, but every other thing can get to their hands. Sometimes Satan destroys you by giving to you. He makes sure that your mind never receives anything. Your mind can receive, can be barren while your pocket is full. And you will, anything that your mind has not received is not your own. If they pay you a salary that only got to your hand, you didn't receive a salary. And very soon you will know. No matter what it is, please hear me, my brothers and my sisters. If it has not been captured in your spirit and your mind, it's not yet your own. We possess things in our hearts and our minds first before our hands demonstrate that we have gotten it. Our generation is obsessed with having physical things because you see when you have physical things it can give a show of results are we together now and and it can suggest some form of progress but real progress is what happens in your spirit and in your mind say my spirit and my mind one more time say my spirit and my mind we're discussing fruitfulness now so that a brother and a sister aspiring to rise to be fruitful according to the word of God that you are not listen carefully that you are not allowed it is not given to you to really experience fruitfulness 
until that happens in your mind and your life and the bible says the first seed that must enter your life and enter your mind please hear me it is not an investment idea it is not a business idea listen it is not it is not it is not um uh, what do we call it products and services they only will make sense when the word notice that the bible never tells us that the farm did not have other things but when satan came he only searched for the word and carried it and left every other thing there the word of god is an incorruptible seed listen please my brothers and my sisters get this the word of god is an incorruptible seed the mindset it says let this mind be in you philippians chapter 2 let this mind be in you and verse 5 let this thinking let this perception be in you which was also in christ jesus philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 let this mind permit this mind permit this mindset to be in you which was also in christ every blessed person every world changer whether in the kingdom and in the secular will tell you that your point of advantage is not what you have in your pocket your point of advantage is not a car your point of advantage is not the house the point of advantage is the quality of the information that your mind like a womb has received and is able to incubate show me a man whose spirit and mind has received from god I show you a man who there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to destroy his fruitfulness it is first in your spirit and your mind while that is happening you're still with your trouser that you use needle and thread to sew doesn't matter while that is happening you are still in your one room with leakages everywhere stay there while that is happening there are no members coming to the church there are still you your wife and three other members don't worry you don't get the anointing just by hands laying on you the cap hands are only like a tap the hand stops on your head but the real impartation goes into your spirit When you drink water, your mouth allows the water to go in and it stops. But the water does not stop in your mouth. It gets into your system. If you leave water just in your mouth, it will not do much. You need to swallow it. When you swallow it, go to bed. Every other thing starts automatically. The moment it leaves your mouth, leave the rest. A system has already been designed. You don't just say, water now, where are you? Okay, you are here shift left no 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 don't worry when you swallow a drug you don't look at the drug and say drug please make no mistake it's my eye not my back there is a design your job is to get it within you and let it stay sometimes some drugs take longer than others to start working there are some drugs that can even cause you to be drowsy to go to sleep so that it can really work and then it would damage everything that it needs to destroy whilst working my brothers and my sisters listen to me the foundation of true success is not running around with proposals i have a proposal I, I need capital i need this i need that no the major work that anybody will do it's not even carrying certificates all around and say just give me a job yeah, and my life will change there's nothing wrong with those things those things are profitless when your mind is barren it will not make any difference it will only convince you sociologically that you are better than someone else but sooner or later you will see that your life does not recognize those activities as progress are we together now there are many pastors who think that ministry rises just because of connections and invitations if i can sing here or preach here or do this no no your real fruitfulness is within the richness of the word of god within you the quality of the wisdom your interaction with the wisdom of god everything that happens is only a revelation of what is going on within the parable of the sower the entire 
the entire story of that parable is about the hearts of men a sower and seed the word of god the living word joshua chapter one please give it to us and verse eight joshua chapter one moses is let's let's even start from verse five give us verse five we'll read down to verse eight there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life as i was with moses so i will be with you i will not fail thee nor forsake you he's doing something to his mind he didn't give him a new knife and say this i sharpen this knife it can cut through trees no he's doing something to his mind that i am empowering your mind that if you can believe this no man will sustain an ability to stand before you all the days of your life and then verse 6 it says be strong and of good courage for unto these people shall thou divide look at god speaking there are giants so and god is telling him how to share the land not how to fight the giants in god's mind victory was settled i've given you victory not by giving you anything physical i did something to your mind that's your victory be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We win not just by physical fights. When our spirits and our minds agree, let every devil clear the way. It's true. Be strong and of good courage. For unto these people thou shalt divide. He didn't say you would die during war. I thought Joshua would say, come, oh God, assure me, these people have real knife. Will I die or I will live? Already, if God tells you you are going to share a land, it will be stupid to be asking whether you will die. God is saying, look, I've seen the end of it. Let me teach you how to share the land. Look, look at victors. Look at fruitful people discussing sharing the land, not fighting. We are talking about Jericho and other nations here. You are standing before a fortified city and God is saying, this is the slice. This one will go to this. Are you getting it now? So you see somebody that does not have Gary and is saying, this one will go to charity. This one is going to go to my parents. I have five siblings and I will take care of them. And you enter and say, what is happening? And you say, I'm planning. I'm planning my victory. You say you are planning your victory. Are you aware that your mother is in the hospital and we need just 20,000 to help her? You say, I'm already planning. I know that I win. Which I swear unto your fathers to give them. Seven. Only be thou strong. What is the requirement? Be strong. Not just be skillful. Don't get me wrong. These are factors, but I'm arranging them according to order of priority. Be strong and very courageous that thou mightest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from me to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper. This is God giving a man a recipe for success. And he's not saying anything about the war he's about to fight. He's not saying follow through the back door. And not, the instruction for victory would come later. He's giving him a winning formula. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous who will make your way it's not only god that makes a way he can empower you to make your way and if you are not ready to make your way prosperous it's a commitment it's a call to responsibility and thou shall have good success brothers and sisters life is systemic we are not the first to enter any realm we desire not at this level god has empowered people listen god has empowered people in business in ministry spiritual life whatever area god has listen god has allowed us to see the scars of people his his the bible is not just full of triumphs it's also full of failure and scars the bible says that all scripture were written for our learning that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope so god allows the 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 the, the, the record of many people's limitations so that you will learn be fruitful 
is a command be fruitful oh thou sower be fruitful and you're saying god change my life change my life and you're thinking in your mind capital oh god capital just give me five hundred thousand, and god you can't even go out of my life and the devil is saying i like this kind of prayer i like anything that takes the word of god out of a man's life he will leave the capital with you and take the word away and you will watch with wonder how you will mess up your own life if i talk to many of us now i say what are you trusting god for in what area are you trusting God for results? I will be surprised how many of us are expecting external things to happen so that it can be proof that the word of God is working. No. When it has to do with fruitfulness, the major work is within. How many ministers will stay and build capacity with the word? There are ministers who do not have a Bible, but they already have suits in advance. And... I believe in success we teach you all the dimensions of success but let me tell you just putting pictures and photos of nice things on your wall and mesmerizing without the word of God is Scientology you are just joking and nothing will happen it is the word of God that empowers as many as believe him he gave them power to become Jesus said follow me follow the word and I will make you make you the maker is the word because it is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow that's why business people who reject god are in trouble ministry people who reject god are in trouble career people who reject god are in trouble it's amazing how many people leave church to go and honor an appointment because they've indoctrinated themselves to believe that god is a luggage vain is the strength of a man in this world that we live in it is the richness of the word of god the richness of your spiritual understanding that translates into your fruitfulness listen invest in understanding invest in understanding before you invest in clothes invest in understanding before you invest in hair invest in understanding before you invest in cars and houses and all of this to invest in understanding is not to buy books to invest in understanding is not to watch sermons to invest in understanding is to have the preparedness to pursue exact knowledge to buy a book is one thing to read it is another thing to understand it is another thing to apply it is another thing the labor dimension of fruitfulness is done internally please listen to me the dynamics of redemption happen in the grave after the third day when everything had finished the grave hades the place of the dead Jesus is done and he's ready to resurrect. Now he comes out in glory and we see the effulgence of his glory and he calls many sons into glory. Listen, if a major part of your life is visible for all to see, you are not successful. If a major part of your life is visible for all to see, in this kingdom, people are only allowed to see a minute part. in fact it's even the manifestation most of the work is done within notice that your nourishment physically only a little part of it is seen they see the food and they see it entering your mouth every other thing the digestion etc etc be fruitful as as god has helped me to rise and grow i found myself I'm, I'm becoming more and more emotional to my own surprise because i look at people and i can understand the heart and the burden of jesus that he says he looks at people as though a sheep without a shepherd and i look i say oh i now see why africa is this way i now see why our lives are this way and do you know many of us believe that because we have sincerity life must answer to us sincerity is very important like we learned but it is not enough something about your understanding has empowered satan to destroy fruitfulness in your life something about your understanding please listen 
understanding is important when they employ you Sam come it's looking sharp and smart look at this when when you employ Sam you are not employing your body there are few employments where they border on size are we together now any size in many jobs can do what they are employing they are employing your understanding and the time with that understanding a job is time plus understanding in someone's assignment are you seeing that now yes so the factor is your understanding i've given this analogy come come stand here for me please look at this reason with me for one moment let's assume that this brother god forbid eh? i always give this example let's call this guy an armed robber that is a thief are we together and let's call this one a pastor a man of god looking sharp and then you are angry at this guy and you are praying that police will apprehend him because he's a nuisance to society and you are praying that god will open doors for this man to go to the nations because you consider him to be a blessing now shoot both of them now it's, it's not good to talk about shooting and a pastor but just in my example shoot both of them and let them fall to the ground dead who really died the dead body is on the ground now are you going to call the dead body a pastor is the dead body a pastor no is the arm robber is the dead body an arm robber neither the dead body nor the past the pastor's body nor the arm robber's body are the arm robbers or the pastor the pastor has gone the arm robber too has gone their bodies are there so who is really the pastor talk to me who is really the pastor this body if Sam adds weight, will it scatter the anointing on his head? Will it make him to suddenly become mad because he's not reasoning well? Not necessary. In fact, not at all. Are we together now? If this arm robber suddenly adds weight, does it necessarily stop him from having the appetite to steal? This is the arm robber and this is the pastor. When Satan comes, he doesn't need the body. He goes to the mind. When the mind sits on the throne, then the body becomes a slave to the mind. The body becomes a helpless executor of the conclusions that have happened. The board meeting happens between the mind and the spirit. The body is not invited. The body only executes the decisions that have been agreed upon. Same thing with the pastor. When the Holy Ghost comes to you like he's coming to some of you now, he's not concerned about the body. He's concerned about your spirit. Then he's concerned about your mindset. Hand over to him your spirit and your mind so that he will plant in you the seed of understanding and watch how your body begins to reflect what has happened within you this my brothers and my sisters is how we are fruitful in this kingdom every other thing like creativity and all of these things only answer to this foundation say be fruitful be fruitful does not mean go and do business that comes later be fruitful does not mean go and look for capital be fruitful does not mean go and do all no no The heart preparation and your mind. Most believers have done well in the area of the heart, the spirit. But our minds are terribly unfruitful. Our minds continue to reject the spoken word of God concerning our lives. And this is my assignment. That if this year, if we are to experience extraordinary fruitfulness, then we have to trust God to begin to transit us. Listen carefully. To transit us from different levels of understanding. There is a requisite level of understanding that can receive what God wants to give you. A man who is pastoring 5,000 members and a man who is pastoring 1,000 and a man who is pastoring 100 and a man who is pastoring 10. The difference is not their size. The difference is not their tribe. The difference is not even the God they gave their lives to. The difference can, may not even be the spiritual authorities they submit to. The difference is the construction of their understanding. That someone has allowed the Holy Spirit to construct his value system 
to be so flawless that he knows how to engage the principles of the kingdom and the physical results show while he's activating these things every member that comes to him is in his house but something from within you calls them and it's not just anointing the health of your mind is a force too it can call the same way it can drive please listen to me my brothers and my sisters if you intend to be fruitful except it's just a cliche you know and, and and many times in africa i think this is the reason why we like signs and wonders not because they are such a big deal alone we like it because we believe it is a cheaper route to results just prophesy apostle why waste your time teach this didn't god anoint you for me i mean just get bottles of oil here touch my head and just like that other person testified that you bear fruits that abide well while i was sitting down here we just had a brief maybe 10 seconds discussion with ajimi and he said he shared a scripture that just blessed me and he said the bible says strong men retain wealth powerful you are not strong just because you have it the ability to retain it means you have conquered the forces that try to take it from you are we together when you lift um, this weight you don't just pick it up and drop it down and win you must hold it for some time it's proof that it's, it did just happen you hold it there while you are shaking and then at a point they say you have the point has been proven that this one you qualify to lift that weight so there are things that when you hold if you are not spiritual and you did not hold it indeed it will slip away but holding it for a while qualifies that you held it through knowledge we don't hold things with our hands our hands only support what our mind has held the real instrument for holding things is your mind when it's too heavy for your mind your hand can support but you don't hold things with your hand is God speaking to us you are seated here right now looking at me swimming through a maze of challenges maybe and believing that you came for koinonia so that you will experience transformation could be in ministry could be in business could be in whatever it is but then the lord is saying i am limited by your understanding there is something about your understanding that is not allowing me bless you and let me tell you this you see why jesus wept any man of god who is committed to transformation knows how frustrating it is it is difficult to get members to receive that's why we take out time and pray not necessarily because what we are saying Saying. it's not necessarily the prayer that brings it are we together when revelation comes the truth is there but praying that when the seed is planted that the minds of the people can receive let me tell you less than 10 percent of members really follow and grow on the information they are given that's why testimonies are scarce that's why there are supernatural instant testimonies but not sustainable ones you will hardly see a member testify back to back for two months he usually will come once and you don't expect to find him again because most of the testimony was not gotten through knowledge prophetic intervention one miracle here i fell under the anointing and the next day this happened so i get a job by a prophetic word but i never get promoted you see that because the understanding that will make me that 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 trustable is not there i had the privilege to have a conversation with a very very notable uh, man you know one of the you know the second in command in one of the great institutions in this nation and then while he was talking to me and we were discussing he told me he said my apostle let me tell you it is not true that there are no jobs it's just that the level of mental depravity of the average young man with risk and this is a born again believer he said we are frustrated every time we take people to come for interviews as they talk we just continue to look at them and the privilege of marking school of ministry scripts has taught me that it is true you know we insult lecturers we insult everybody they gave me they gave me i have done at least you know i love god and i love you i have marked things that have said my god how in the world does this person plan to that's why 
teachings like it doesn't matter what happens in your mind just receive the anointing and rise we like it because we know that what is in there if god is going to remove it it will take time but i tell you don't fight with the spirit sit down and let him take that thing let him edit your understanding and plant the word of god and my brother and my sister you will watch your life rise to reflect what god is putting within you this is another place where the error of speaking without transformation comes just to call it no sir to where it's like opening a tap and there is no container to receive it the prophet was only comfortable to prophesy when there were vessels because the oil would be wasted without vessel to just believe that you just keep calling things at random to your life with an empty mind is a joke this is scientology and you have to be careful with all these materials we read around about the universe and all of this let me tell you by the grace of god god has granted us the privilege of light in this ministry from any dimension you look at it we're vast people who are keen on knowledge so we don't speak from a standpoint of ignorance whether from business from ministry from whatever we are we are by the grace of god enlightened enough to provide the guidance that gives you balance i can tell you many people will continue to be frustrated because they lack the understanding on how the kingdom of god and his systems accurately work are we together be fruitful is not just a prophetic declaration alone that happens automatically be fruitful leads you through a process and the first of the processes is to allow the word of god to find expression in your spirit then to find expression in your mind the moment your mind begins to transit start rejoicing with no idea yes sir start rejoicing because inevitably the physical equivalent of everything that is already happening will begin to come to you in 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 circles of what you will think are coincidences but they are orchestrations based on a spiritual law i was sharing with the leaders and i said every time the student is ready the lecturer always shows up every time the student is ready the lecturer always shows up Be fruitful. He's not just speaking to your body. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. This is what will put money in your pocket. Be fruitful. It is not the capital that is given to your hands that makes you fruitful. It is not the business, the investment, or the job. The job is only a physical platform to give your understanding expression to reward you. Nobody prospers from business nobody prospers from investment nobody prospers from jobs you prosper off your understanding all of these things are simply platforms that give your understanding room that's why two people can have the same platforms but different understandings and all those vehicles will produce at different rates even in the good soil it produced 30 fold 60 fold hundredfold the same way we have several people here in koinonia many of you are members workers and leaders but your results are produced at different rates same anointing same mentorship same programs same teaching different results all producing are we together if you want to be fruitful your assignment is not to just start buying good clothes thank god for that i say this because you see young people have a pressure that society is pushing on people now they look at you and say since when did you graduate you say five years say, you are still dressing like this and the next thing god blesses you with thirty thousand. off you go to somewhere in anger i must buy stretch jeans thirty thousand. i must buy this and that and you shop it you 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 shop physical things and then you put yourself under pressure and then you come back and say look this is to announce to you i have now improved we say why you say because i have a bigger house because i have a bigger car because i have a bigger this i have that to me that that is increase no sir and your mind keeps saying you are wasting your time you only bought something for someone else 
I look at your mind and the only thing you have bought is a book because that's the only thing that has stayed in your mind. That's why nobody can steal the book because your mind caught it. Every other thing can be carried away because it only came around your life but not in your mind. The wealth must be gotten here before it comes here. Are we together? Yes. Apostle, now if somebody gives me money to start a business, can't I just start and prosper? You will fail. It's not an insult. You will fail. 99% of the people who want to start business will fail. Not because there are statistics of failure. Your mind, you do not have the understanding of the system to prosper. Anybody who wants to prosper, your first assignment is to look for references and models. Transformation is easy when there are references. Not activity, not action. No. Listen, when there is no reference, your, your mind operates with imagery. And the moment there is no reference for the possibility that you want to step into, you are not going there. Who is God speaking to? That this thing you are doing, you are just dreaming until there is a reference. That's why by the grace of God, we continue to walk with the Holy Spirit. That he continues to lift us, to make us better references. Listen, let me tell you this. If you sit under an apostolic ministry, walking in signs and wonders, you will enter into that grace fast because there is a reference. Your spirit can easily pick. Are we together? If your pastor is a poor man, by the grace of God, you will grow in the word. But it's going to be difficult because there is no reference. There is an impartation that results on themselves bring to you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's very important. That's why it's important. Every ministry and every organization rises to reflect the mindset of the leaders. It is true. Koinonia is a reflection of our mindset and also a reflection of our limitation. If you look at Koinonia and you see anything wrong, it is a reflection of the areas where personally my understanding and our understanding has not been well constructed our assignment is to bridge that gap as fast as possible through knowledge so that you will build what is akin to an edifice a proof of mastery as you grow notice you grow in the secret but you see your result on the members you stay in the secret and God brings a new level of the anointing and you start watching in the physical to see. They were not there when God was giving you those new dimensions but then you begin to get it. A time will come in this ministry you will start seeing people have cars in strange ways. A time will come you will see people start having certain results will rise. It is not just their personal faith is that there has been an upgrade in the secret place that can now receive that level of reality. A time is going to come when we will get our own property and sometimes it can be within two, three months and everything is put in place. You would think it just came. No, the lifting in the spirit. God now says now you have the capacity there are things if God gave me today, I prayed for it for years. But I look at it today and I thank God for not answering those prayers. Because had he given me, it is true that you would have been a waste. The same way you have been praying. Notice that certain things seem to never get answered in your miracle service request. And it is not always that demons are stopping it. It is God's mercy that is keeping it from you. Because it will be a waste. And if you lose it, it will take a long time before it comes. So God will keep it for you. And let you just wallow in your interpretation, calling it delay. Whereas God is keeping it like a faithful caretaker until your understanding is able to sustain it. Are we together? Yes. This book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate, 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 meditate. Value for the word of God. Listen, let me tell you, I, I look at people in this ministry and I am blessed the way God is lifting people in this ministry. Sometimes I, I, I know how I met them and I know how they came and see the power of the word of God. 
transiting people. The word of God is not a charm. The word of God is a compendium of the principles of God. The understanding of the systems of God and obtaining grace to engage them is what changes your life. Listen, a day will come you will sit down and say, God, stop giving me money. As far as my personal needs are concerned, I don't know what to do. And God says, it's an irreversible process. It will keep coming. So God will say, divert anyone to the kingdom. But to stop it, it can't happen again. Wait till I teach you on wealth this year. God taught me something new. Ah. You see how you clapped? It's a reflection of the passion and the prayer. Oh God. Well, and it's not an insult. It's a wonderful thing. But let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, if this mind does not change, your life will not change. A man is in bondage when his mind is in bondage. No matter how free he is, he is bound. Watch my knee was bound and kept in prison many things happened to him but when they bound him he spoke loudest because his mind was still alive hallelujah glory to the lamb glory to the father you are seated on the throne hallelujah encourage you sit down sit down we're going to pray we spend time worrying about people who don't like us do you know if they are not in your mind they can't do you anything wickedness only hurts you to the degree to which you allow it to step in it's true that you immune your mind that you come from a family where people say you too you want to rise you are also joining them you are coming to that that stupid place where there are you people are just jumping for nothing and you feel stupid and sometimes in that stupidity you open the gate of your mind and allow them to enter when they enter your mind you are gone set a guard over my mind it was a prayer set a guard Lord, that no matter what happens around my life, shield my mind and my life is safe. If you injure yourself, it can heal. Are we together? But the Bible says a broken spirit dried the bones. The bones can be healthy and the spirit broken and the bones begin to reflect what is happening. You don't off this light by breaking every bulb one by one. The light is reflecting the health of a generator and the health of a switch. Just because one switch is faulty, every healthy bulb will remain off at the mercy of one switch. The focus, my brother and my sister, is not in doing physical things. This anointing and this lifting you see, is not by physical connection. I'm a good musician. Invite me. I promise you that in the name of Jesus, I will rise. No. Let me tell you how to be invited. Stay in the secret place. Allow the spirit of God to brood. He will give you one song. He knows what men cannot resist. He will coordinate by all grace and anoint you one song that you will raise. People, and he will make sure the ear of the person who can help you hears that song. And he says, who sang this song? Come to my church. He will array every other helper and he will anoint you so lavishly that day. You, you rise like a spring up and never go down again. The systems of lifting are very easy when your understanding is in place. It is difficult for God to lift a man whose understanding is unfruitful. You will frustrate the potentials of the spirit. Listen, brothers and sisters, this is a call to sit down. This running around and premature manifestation, comparing yourself with yourselves, the Bible says they are not wise. The key is to sit down. Someone will come dressing sharp like Sam is looking and try to intimidate you and say you have been in this area for years. The only thing I hear is ba 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 And the empty head, empty pocket, oh yeah, take and go and buy Indomie. And you feel stupid as you go to the shop with 1,000 naira and say, God, is this how you plan to disgrace me? And God will say, if I give you money, have I not insulted you? Listen, 
listen brothers and sisters don't be so poor that all you have is money if all you have is an object you remove from your pocket or an object that is stored in a bank out of fear you are truly poor follow me when I finish those words I told you be fruitful we are just starting then there is multiply then there is replenish then there is subdue they are not the same never be poor such that all you have is just money if all you have is money you are extremely poor because there are many things money cannot do most poor people agree with what I'm saying because they have been angry about money since not because they understand it you say this in an average church and people say yes it's true it's just an opportunity to be angry at something they've tried to get but it is true God is giving you what is better than money you know this issue of saying this person is worth this what's that oh pastor alpha you are worth 10 million what, what nonsense what do you mean i'm worth 10 million no what do you mean you are worth 100 million 1 billion these are just carnal expressions sensual manifestations and it's not just say, oh i'm worth the blood of jesus is true too but you can be worth something solid that is greater than money hmm. hallelujah Glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on. Listen, I have taught you that there are things when you have in life, only the poor need you. There are things when you have in life, only the rich need you. There are things when you have in life, only the educated need you. There are things when you have in life only the uneducated need you. There are things when you have in life only children need you. There are things when you have in life only young people need you. There are things in life when you have only old people need you. But my brothers, there are things when you possess in this life. When you possess it. The, listen, listen, listen. You walk life at your terms. The great see you and call you great. This is what God is giving you. Sit down. We are going to pray. Listen, look at me. Make no mistakes to think all this labor is simply to get money to your pocket. If that's all I'm doing with this teaching, I've insulted you. I deserve to be arrested for insulting you that bad. If all that we are doing in Koinonia is just to get you to a point where you can have a car or a house, it's an insult. You don't need to hear what I'm saying to buy a car or a house. What I'm giving you will make kings stand before you and look at you. Listen, they will come with their pride and hang it like Sheba in front of your door and stand and say, teach us wisdom. Are you getting me? I pray in the name of Jesus that you understand that there is a more superior way of living. I can meet Sam and Sam can bring out some money to sow into my life as a man of God and I collect what Sam has brought and I believe I'm valuable because he gave me some money I look at the money and smile and then I run away no listen when you get what I am teaching you and putting in your mind you will find out that the equation that the world uses a young man you save for 10 years and get a house. That equation is for some people. I'm exempting you from that list. Are you getting what I'm saying? Listen to me. Oh, borrow money from the bank and build a house, then repay over 30 years. No. There is a dimension that when you have, my brothers and my sisters, an estate developer will come to you and look at you and say, can I give you the privilege? I've taught you something. Look at this isn't it amazing that the greediest people in the world are still givers it's just that you are not the one they give to let me tell you this there is nobody that is really greedy they just believe you are not deserving of that level of communication some of our parents we will call them 
and say daddy support me and they will refuse yet a man of god will come to the city and they will carry 10 times the amount you have been begging and kneel down and say sir can you give us the privilege to sow they are not greedy they just believe it's unfair to give you that much listen your pride should not be a car your pride should not be good clothes what you are receiving you have left the level of car and clothes since what you are waiting for now is the systems that bring them i want you to believe in what i'm telling you if you think right now what you are getting is what will give you a car what will give you a car finished since 2013 14 you are receiving what will subdue nations not a car what is a car what is a bank account how many what is a visa to go to abroad london is it jupiter listen be careful the things that represent your expectations don't shortchange yourself god is giving you the keys of the hearts of kings of nations not not some little one one jeep here one this and you say now i have a jeep my mind ah oh, no please a time will come we'll just sit down and testify and we'll be grateful god just did this and that and that to be an insult that what you are learning now is just for an estate no. an estate a car my brothers and my sisters be patient with god and be patient with me and watch what your life becomes it's a guarantee that i give you by god we're not talking of buying a car we're not talking of buying clothes we're talking of shutting the gates of nations I had the privilege to meet with a very great woman of God who is also a business person and while we were talking she was telling me her itinerary and she said she's on her way to France right now that the president of France they need to have meetings I said this is it whereas some mediocre somewhere is there harassing people just because he bought an expensive shoe there are people deciding the destinies of nations a president of a nation like france calling for you to sit down this is what god is training you to become the level of anointing you are receiving is not to compare yourself with somebody in your family to say i am first that's mediocrity that is for somebody who is just passing koinonia to go to his house that's what that person receives as the gift for just passing to go I testify, testify that your goodness is real. I testify that your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. I testify. Your goodness is real. I testify. Listen, the work you are doing in your destiny is what you are doing now. A time will come when from morning till night, all that you will see is testimonies of men coming to serve your needs. It will surprise you and because you will not be a man of God as it were. You know, most times we've thought that these things only happen to men of God. It's not true. These are the systems of the kingdom. You've heard me say that we will all be great and that we will all know ourselves. Keep watching. Keep watching what our children will be. Keep watching. Most times people don't believe truth until it's too late. There are people today who look and say, I used to know this man. It's not used to know. God is giving you an opportunity to catch a flight that only the hand of God can limit where it is going. It is by the Spirit. Listen. This tonight is a message of hope so that this pressure to prove a point throw it out of the window you have left that realm since hear what I'm telling you you have left that realm since pressure to prove a point oh apostle I'm, my desire now is to trust God let me just get a four bedroom flat and God says but you got a four bedroom flat right when koinonia started it is just coming through the loins of time to manifest who through faith subdued kingdoms 
there are some of you let me tell you when you you see this is why when you see the physical manifestation of certain people's results the level of their transformation does not allow them to start physically at certain levels you see god jump to a height is because of the vastness of their level of understanding there are some of you here you will be surprised that your first car will be a jeep and people will be angry not because a jeep is anything god says if if i will have to be this is the fairest i can be to you based on how you have transited and then you will be surprised to find out that while you were thinking god would just give you a two-bedroom flat and this and that god will bring you to a five-bedroom flat and god will say this is just to give you the convenience to start out in life and people will be surprised because it's not in your heart it's amazing how believers mark time under certain achievements it tells you that they didn't plan to go far one man of god sent me a text sometime and he said somebody sent him five thousand dollars he said apostle i can't believe i'm holding dollars five thousand dollars and he was shouting was saying, "Ah, god thank you and i sent him a text after a long time i said mister be careful that can be the very reason why you go down if your whole life is worth five thousand dollars you are very small are you getting what i'm saying that one person here one person will be able to have the resources that can completely clear an idp camp one person without making noise this is what god is raising you to become and you will not even consider yourself to be a kingdom financier doing that you are just somebody who loves god Hi. be patient be patient i cause the spirit of hurry be patient be patient Watch what our children in Koinonia become. When they are five, ten, you will look at their lives and you will see how wealthy they will become independent of your contribution by engaging the world themselves. There are some of you seated here right now and all you are dreaming of is starting your church and the anointing on you with all humility even many overseers do not have it. And God says, sit down there. Just sit down. Because I'm not giving you a church. I'm giving you territories. Territories. Not just a small church to flatter yourself and compare yourself between a group of pastors and say, I am better. No, sir. No, sir. I testify. Testify that your goodness is real. I testify, testify that your goodness is real. Hey, your goodness is real. I testify. Your goodness is real. Listen, we are going to pray. Let me speak to someone here. The prayer request that you think God did not answer, He's answered it since. It's just that you didn't know how the answer comes. He answered it since. Some of you, God looked at your prayer request and all He saw was a blank sheet because everything you wrote, you are bigger than it already. And God did not see a need. God is saying, You've not given me a prayer request. You wrote nonsense there. Lord, if I can just have 30,000 every month, and Lord, if I can, and God just looks at it and says, the level of the word that is in you can only allow for minimum a hundredfold return. I say, God, but I'm a village boy, I'm a village girl, and God says, leave all of that one and stay with me. Listen, beware of the pride of unbelievers. Respect unbelievers who have gotten knowledge. But there are many unbelievers who are ignorant and you see them 
doing, making all kinds of noise. They will rubbish you and make you look small. I sense that there is a spirit that is just going around great believers to make them feel small, to make them look like we have waited so long. Is it that God cannot give you a shoe? What is in a shoe that God cannot give you? What is in a cloth? You mean you are still using a, a second hand with one? Abba, you should have left this level and you go back feeling stupid. And God says, my daughter, forget about this. Are you ready to pray? be fruitful he's giving you the keys of nations the keys the keys the keys not the key of a territory the keys of nations listen today by the grace of god koinonia has become like a place of pilgrimage you cannot believe the number of people who want to come here for visit i've had to restrain many of them pleading with them because I think that we may not have the facilities to truly honor them as we should. It is not location. It is not where you go. When you stay with God and the light shines from you, my brothers and my sisters, you will become a praise of nations that people will look at you and our family will say, we've been praying for rising. We didn't know God answered it in a person. We thought God would shift us to another territory. Lift your voice and begin to pray in the spirit and say, Lord, thank you. Though my beginning may be small, though my beginning may be small, but my latter end, though my beginning may be small, if someone pray, I am fruitful. I may not yet manifest fruitfulness in my pocket. I may not yet manifest fruitfulness in a job. I may not yet manifest fruitfulness in my business, but in the name of Jesus, I declare that I am fruitful. Gentiles to my light. Gentiles to my light. Are you praying, Koinonia? Be fruitful. Be productive. God is altering your thoughts, altering your understanding. We win by the help of our spirit man and the health of our understanding God is showing you the laws of the spirit showing you success systems take your eyes away from the physical results I assure you nothing will stop them from coming men may mock you they may laugh at you. Where is the increase in ministry if you are really anointed? Where are the invitations to travel around? If you are really anointed, who is placing a demand on your grace? They will say, but forget about them and stay with the God of all flesh. Let him walk upon your spirit. Let him walk upon your mind. Allow that pregnancy that is in your mind. Allow it to reach maturation and watch the wonder that you will produce. Your goodness is real. Testify. Your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to challenge the spirit of impatience. Listen. God is a God of speed. But God only gives you your inheritance when you are built up. Everybody say built up. Be careful with unhealthy comparison. Business people listen. Career people listen. We were all classmates. Now this one is like this. This one has two houses. And I am here. Nothing is moving. Be careful. If you see that in your life, know it's an attack. Listen, listen. Especially for our dear sisters. Listen to me, my adorable ladies. Let me tell you this. You listen to what this arrogant world without Christ is telling you. You will not amount to anything. They will make you feel stupid for loving God. 
they will make you feel stupid for staying and growing you will look so cheap and weak but you stay and let God adorn you like Hadassah and lift you like a trophy in one day one day what is a prayer point of nations come to you because you are prepared Don't be ashamed of where you are. You are still fruitful. Don't be under pressure. Listen, listen, let me tell you this. If you can conquer the pressure of proving a point, you have conquered life. The pressure of proving a point. I need to prove to the people in my family. I need to prove to the people in my village. They've been saying, what are you doing in Zaria for five years? Eh? Are you cursed that your life is not rising? Hold on. When God is done with you, ah. my deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Let me tell you a humorous story and then we'll pray. Some time back I was to inv be invited somewhere, one of the places that I went to minister. And a man of God was called and asked and said, Do you know Apostle Joshua Selman? And he said, Well, I've heard about him, but I don't know him. And the man at the other side of the phone advised the, the people to invite me and said, Can't, We don't know this man. Don't invite him rather invite a b c d and the person at the phone say you don't know the encounters i've had with this man it's impossible for us no matter what you say we must invite him that's what happens when you wait for god there are men that continue to pray secretly why don't you fall so that it will justify their prophecy but my brothers and my sisters when god puts something in your spirit and put something in your mind you have watched people waste their time forever they will waste their time forever. It is the finger of God that lifts you and keeps you. They will finish a meeting and say, don't promote Pastor Alpha. Sit down here. He will never rise. Just when they finish, the man goes back and by the next day, the promotion letter is out. Listen, there are not too many people like us on earth. It's important for you to understand this. It's not pride. It's a breed that is plucked out of fire. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. and admire today will be the things that will follow you tomorrow you would drive them and they say we can't go you called us you called us but he seek ye first the kingdom of God and his methodology his systems and all other things is a guarantee except this word your certificate can only take you so far your intellect can only take you so far but my brothers and sisters i commend you to god he says i commend you not just to your certificate not just to the advantage of your tribe not just to your family connection i commend you first to god and then to the word of his grace and he leaves you with an assurance that it is capable of building you up and giving you an inheritance a time will come those who mock you will give up they will see that you have risen to a height and a level where it will be stupid to talk about you the lifter of men lifting you I like you to decree and declare no power is stopping me from being fruitful fruitful in my spirit fruitful in my mind koinonia you pray shamakato shatia embrekato sakatoras kimahashalakatos entalika 
the anointing is growing in my spirit i'm full of the power of god full of the holy ghost some may trust in shadows and others horses but i trust in the name of the lord i may not have relatives to back me i may not have a wealthy family to support me but i have received god and the word of his grace that is able 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 to lift me outside i will pray why we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are temporal 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 hallelujah be fruitful carry that mentality every time the word of god says be fruitful the devil takes you to your atm and says how much is there every time the word says be fruitful he says so why are you thinking of paying rent you are even trusting god to raise the money for the rent does that look like fruitfulness let me tell you, the devil is a liar. He's a master of the sense realm. And if you dwell there, you will say, where are the members? You have 10 members and you have the effrontery to say you are fruitful. Are you ready to prophesy to yourself? Spirit, soul, and body, I am fruitful. Decree and declare. I will make you exceeding fruitful. Nations will come out of you and kings out of your loins. Businessman prophesy. Yes, sir, with no evidence. I am fruitful. I am fruitful. Blessed is the man that shared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. And his righteousness endures forever. Man of God, are you praying? I'm fruitful. The anointing is at work in my life. Nobody can reject the investment of the Holy Ghost upon my life. It may take time, but I'm rising in the name of Jesus Christ. My family members may not yet see the hand of God upon my life. Everybody around me may doubt the finger of God. I may even doubt it myself, but I hear to the command. I am fruitful. I am fruitful. In spite of your failures, I am fruitful. Declare fruitful. Hallelujah. That's my mindset. Fruitful. 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 Take your eyes away. I am fruitful. The landlord harasses you is true and fruitful still fruitful you may not have money to prepare a meal but in the name of jesus god is doing something the wealth is not transferred to your account the wealth is transferred to the soil of your mind our god is an awesome god he reigns from heaven above with wisdom power. Chapter 2 and verse 5. Don't forget Philippians. Let this mind. Let this mindset. Let this body of understanding be in you. Listen. Hold on. Every great man you know is who he is. Not because of the wealth and the affluence. The wealth and the influence is a receipt for something you have paid for. When you see money in your pocket, that money is a receipt. You get receipts only when you have bought things. The good shoe is a receipt. The good cloth is a receipt. The first class flight is a receipt. It is not the reason why you are blessed. It is the proof that you are already blessed. Are you getting me now? 
How many of you know that sometimes when you go to a mall after you shop, you have to patiently wait on the queue for the next cashier to attend to you? That's what is happening to many of us. You have already bought the things. You are at the point of completing that transaction and then life will hand you the receipt. It will come as a car. It will come as open doors. It will come as you never having to follow the bus for anything again. It will come as you having the convenience to do certain things for the kingdom. But until then, be patient. For some of you, you are, you, have, you are standing on that queue, just waiting for your turn to come. And my brothers and my sisters, you will come up with a level of results that will surprise you. Can I tell you this? Don't be afraid of results that came through understanding. Don't be afraid of results that came through understanding. Most times you see, because of the multiple failures, like the man who planted, when you plant by the wayside, when you plant by the rock, when you plant upon thorns, that experience alone may make you think even the good soil will fail. But you see, when that seed begins to grow and becomes a great tree, it will not only bless you, it will bless the birds. It will bless everybody who is passing around. That's what God is doing with us. Are you getting what I'm saying? Very, very important. You are receiving something. You are receiving the anointing. But you are receiving an understanding. So don't let the devil come and begin to talk jargons. You will fail in your life. You will fail in your business. You will fail in marriage. You will fail in um, um, financially. You will fail spiritually. That organization, you cannot be able to run an organization. You, you cannot be able to run a ministry. Who told you that? Do you not know that it is wisdom and knowledge that creates stability? They are the stabilizers of destiny. And that's what God is doing. So we are going to pray. Lord, reconstruct my understanding to be able to receive the things that will make me fruitful. Lift your mind, your, your voice and pray. Reconstruct my understanding. Reconstruct my understanding. Lord, there are things in my mind that may not allow me to be fruitful. I acknowledge them. Are you praying? I acknowledge that there are limitations, territorial limitations, tribal limitations, sociological limitations. I've interacted with a kind of people who have kept me bankrupt mentally. They may be my family members. They may be my relatives. They may be my classmates. They may be well-meaning people. If someone pray, Lord, I give you the allowance to alter my understanding. There is something I know or do not know about ministry that is allowing me to be unfruitful. There is something I know or I do not know about finances that makes me to keep going up and down. There is something I know or do not know about the anointing that doesn't allow me to host very superior levels of grace. Quicken my understanding. Quicken my understanding. Quicken my understanding. Hallelujah. I apologize for taking time. The Holy Spirit is giving me a scripture. Isaiah 11 and verse 2. We're still praying. Isaiah 11 and verse 2. Can you still have it projected? Isaiah 11 and verse 2. Let's see if we can find it. Let me turn it here to save time. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2. Hmm. I'm handing over to you a secret. Is a secret that make men really great and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the sevenfold manifestation of the Spirit of God and the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord verse 3 it says and shall make him of quick understanding quick all of these spirits synergize themselves to make sure your understanding is quick. This is what you have to pray. A quickened understanding is a real miracle. You can have as a student a five-point CGPA, yet your understanding is unfruitful. The fortitude to understand life, to know wisdom, is understanding. You become a priority personality by default. Your understanding upgrades you like you are upgraded from economy to a business class to first class. Your understanding upgrades you to a level in life where you never have to come down again. You are not trying to stay. It has stabilized you at a realm. Are you ready to pray finally? Lord, quicken my understanding. 
I confess that there are gaps in my knowledge. I confess that there are gaps. I, I am learning already, but my foundation is fighting my mindset. I am, I am still loyal to old ideas. I am still loyal to old concepts. Lord is taking me a hard time to acclimatize myself to a new system of lifting. I cry for mercy and I cry for grace. Is someone praying? I am still sympathetic to a, a depraved level of thinking that will not allow you do business with me. Hallelujah. A prophetic word is only useful when there is a vessel. The vessel is your heart. The vessel is your mindset when the Holy Spirit renews your mind it's like it's like a welder creating a container and once everything has been welded well then prophecy can deposit that spiritual investment upon you and you will find out that you will retain strong men retain wealth not money wealth the wealth of the anointing retained by strength not the strength of the flesh be strengthened in your inner man inner man that's where true true strong people are even physically if you are stronger than me it doesn't guarantee that you can defeat me is that true because my mind can create a strategy that will defeat you that's how it is it is not always to the physically strong it is not always in physical agility but the health of your spirit mind and a well-developed understanding you see I teach you and continue to stand with the Holy Spirit to work on our minds because as your mind begins to seek transformation it must be guided are we together the mind is like a womb seeking for any kind of seed and there are other seeds in other sessions I will show you that there is the part two of that parable that Jesus gave. We'll go to the part two while men slept. That's the part two of that story. Another sower also came and sowed a seed and left. So there are many sowers, and there are times you can open up your heart because you want to succeed. You open up your heart to zodiac and Scientology and all kinds of things to try to manipulate the cosmic world to release energy and once have I spoken and twice have we heard that all power belongs to God. There are certain liftings. If it happens, it is only God that can do it. I have seen what prophecy can do. The Bible is full of the wonders that happened to men when the spirit of prophecy was allowed to find expression. The power of prophecy was classically shown in the vision of Ezekiel. The Bible lets us know that Ezekiel was taken to a valley that was full of dry bones. Listen carefully. The Bible says the bones were very dry. Not only very dry, the bones were not together. The fact that you cannot find it does not mean it's not available. The bones were there. They were out of sight, but they were still in existence, waiting for prophecy to bring them together. Are you getting what I'm saying? For as long as a prophetic word did not come, those bones remained there. And then he says, son of man, can these bones live? He says, only thou knowest. And then he said, prophesy. He said, I prophesied as I was commanded. When God commands and you prophesy, he confirms. I prophesied not as I wanted, not as I chose to, but as I was commanded. And the next thing that happened was there was a sound. The Bible says that shaking and bones began to look for themselves. Bones talk of structures, structures. Son of man, prophesy again to the four winds and say, O winds, breathe upon this slain. And he prophesied again as commanded. 
and the Bible declares that the wind came, entered into these bodies without life, and they arose, an exceeding great army. I believe with all my heart that's what God is going to do over someone's life. Son of man, can this situation live again? Son of man, can your life live again? Son of man, can your finances live again? Can the fire upon your life be rekindled again? Can the doors be opened again? Again means once upon a time, they were not bones. They never started as bones. They started as an army. Something happened and reduced them back to become bones that were very dry. Another incident, the Bible says that the sons of the prophet were with Elisha and they said, where we meet with you is too small. Let us go beyond the Jordan. And the Bible says he granted them permission and while they were cutting the tree, the axe head fell. And one of the sons of the prophet said, alas, master, for it was borrowed. You thought that the prophet would sit down and say, Talk, what do we do? He said, no, where fell it? And he showed him the place and he carried a stick. A stick. God's methodology sometimes can be strange, but it works. That's why you have to walk by faith. Listen, very simple teaching tonight, but it will change your life. And he threw that stick and against gravity, the axe head began to float. Another time, there was hunger in the land of Samaria. The hunger was so bad that the Bible records that women were eating their children. Nigeria has not gotten to that level. I'm not sure of any nation in the world where people have been hungry. I'm not talking of cannibalism as a spirit. But that hunger will make a mother. Imagine your child and you look at your child and carry your child to the kitchen and cut your child and eat a whole child in one day. Two women. Remember that was the agreement. There was no record that they shared that child with any neighbor or anything. Imagine the hunger. That means it was not a natural hunger that will make people eat a, a plate of food is not up to a child's head. Yet two people ate a whole child. Is that a normal hunger? No. And by the next day, it was the turn to eat the child of the other woman. And she protected the child. And that was where fight came from. That means hunger can bring fight. That means one of the principles of peace is abundance. That when there is enough, there is love. There is understanding. Is that true? Hunger brought a contention between two people who were once friends. But that's not my point. The king comes and then finds out that two women are fighting and the king gets angry. And say, where is this man? Where is this prophet? Let's, 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 the anger. What is happening? Why is this land in a state of famine and drought? Bottom line, the news reaches the prophet and all of that, the king wanting to kill him and all of that. And then the prophet prophesies and says, by this time, if the prophet said abundance will come, it would have never come because he did not add a time component to it. Notice that every time the prophets speak, they carry the realities in the realm of the spirit that are timeless. They are called timeless possibilities. Possibilities with no time frame attached to them. It is prophecy that allocates the time for their manifestation. Listen very carefully. The realm of the spirit is a compendium of possibilities with no time allocated to them. Listen carefully. What you call time is only dependent on two things. One, that your life synchronizes with God's predeterminate counsel. Are we together? Or number two, that by the power of prophecy, a time is allocated to that possibility are made to find expression on earth. It is this reality that can allow to shift things that would have happened in your yesterday but was hijacked by spirits because the realm of the spirit has timeless possibilities. 
prophecy can shift what would have happened three years and bring it into your tomorrow and make it happen. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Very powerful. Remember, you cannot do anything about time. Once time passes, that's it. But the Bible tells us that prophecy is able to lift things and bring them into the future and rename them and give them dates to appear again. So if a woman is supposed to have had three children in her 15 years of marriage and the devil hijacked her womb, what prophecy does is that you can speak to that woman and God will take those children that would have been and bring them and the woman will be pregnant with triplets. You see that? Prophecy. The victory of the saints is at the mercy of their understanding the operation of the kingdom. The victory of the saints is not just dependent on the finished work of Christ. Please listen. The victory of the saints is not just dependent on the finished work of Christ. The victory of the saints is dependent on their comprehending the operations of the kingdom. What I call the ordinances of heaven. God's system of making possibilities manifest. That is the reason why we continue to press in the spirit. Like spiritual archaeologists. Exploring the height, the width, the depth of the ways of God. And like archaeologists when we find something that we think is worthy of note. We treasure it. The Bible says the kingdom is like a man who lost a pearl. Is that true? And the first thing that he did was he lit a candle and went to the room. And started sweeping that room to find it. The Bible also talks about the kingdom as one who went and found a worthy jewel. And sold all that he had to buy the entire plot. That entire estate. So we continue to search. And the Bible says, everyone that seeketh, finds. If you are serious enough and desperate, the spirit of revelation will come. You will never find the secrets of the kingdom being casual. Lord, if you, if you will show me, show me, are you not God? Open my eyes, let me see. No, you will not reward anyone who approaches you with that kind of laxity. You can discern diligence. He is the rewarder of not them that seek him, them that diligently seek him. Lord, I won't let you go. Open my eyes. Show me the key. I, I, I admit that I don't know much, but Lord, open my eyes. And then the spirit of revelation comes. The angel came and told Daniel, he said, I am come to give you understanding. Daniel prayed and said, I'm not leaving this place. Lord, you must give me understanding about the times and the strategy and what to do. Twenty and one days he was there traveling. And then the angel came, granted him access to revelation. And he said, I, Daniel, understood by books. It was not just a book like opening to read. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Yes. So, the, you must not only know what God has prepared for you. You must continue to explore the systems allocated for making it your reality. Ephesians 4 verse 18 is an anthem in this place. The Bible says, having their understanding darkened. It says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Alienated. That means that your life does not become a reflection of what God has said. And the Bible says it doesn't mean he lied, but that something about your life and my life, there is a level of understanding. Understanding of what? Not just an information, the ways of God. Are we together now? Please give me this. This is a bottle of water. Look up, please, everyone. This is a bottle of water. Now, it is true that swan water gives me a guarantee that if I open this bottle, I'm going to have an enjoyable experience. Is that true? Now, you have given me the bottle, but there is a technology to open it. If you turn this thing clockwise, it will not open. Is that true? 
the system of opening it is to turn it anti-clockwise and keep turning it until the lid removes. As simple as this instruction is, you can die of test. Not because you are not powerful enough to lift the bottle. You can struggle turning this clockwise. And then it will look like swan water has calmed you. Whereas there is a deficiency in your understanding. Now notice that you can do this and grow old doing it. And a little child will come and say, my daddy taught me. Come, let me show you. And just turn this and in two minutes, the water is there for you to take. It's a little key that opens a very big door. How many of you have lost your key and you had to stand outside? You can see the yam from the window, but you can't eat it. Why? Because a key between you and whatever it is that you prepared, someone was careless enough to make sure that key was missing. A small key that you can put in your pocket, yet that key kept you outside. As educated as you are, you are still outside. As rich as you are, have you ever lost your ATM? And you stand angry as rich as you are. They just made a transfer and you are hungry. The ATM is looking at you. You are looking at it. The difference between you and your breakthrough is that ATM. Imagine how small things cause big trouble. Small key. ATM. That's the same way one spiritual principle you should know. That may be the missing link. You've done step A, B, C, D. Step E, which is the last step, you may not know and stay there for 10 years until God by his mercy comes. For some of you, that last step is what you are getting tonight. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have done what you need to do. Hannah went at Shiloh. The Bible says Hannah prayed and prayed and prayed and they looked at her and thought that the woman was drunk and all of that and, and the prophet looked at her and said, I mean, what kind of irresponsibility is this? You are drunk in the temple? And she said, no, my Lord. She was communicating her travail. All had been set except prophecy. We don't just build with intelligence in this kingdom. We build as prophecies upon us. They build it through and they prosper through the prophesying of Haggai. Are we together now? And the prophet spoke to her and she had a child supernaturally. It looks very simple. I have prayed for people and sometimes spoken over their lives quite honestly, jokingly. And I've been amazed at the way God honored it and their lives changed. Could this be the missing link? That you have done what you know. The shop is already there. The goods are already there. But for some strange reasons, the customers do not come. Your certificate is already there. The application has been submitted. But you are building with intelligence. You are building. But the prophecy that will make that building finish. The Bible did not say they started building. It says the building finished. This is a secret that worked in my own life. This is the secret that is working in this ministry. They build and they finished through the power of prophecy. I continue to explore the wonders of prophecy, especially the creative dimension of prophecy, that you can speak over someone's life. You can imagine this dear lady and a prophetic word is spoken. Let me tell you this. You know I told you something. Anything that is a blessing is not tangible. It's not physical. Whoever gives you anything that you can hold and calls it a blessing. Yes, we say that you were blessed. But the truth is you were supported. Blessings are always spiritual. Read your Bible. You don't bless men with what money can buy. You don't bless people with material things. So I can give you money. You say I bless you. It's true. But the truth is that what the blessing is not the money you are holding. The blessing is the favor that brought that money. That's what you are giving. So if you have the discernment when you go to the shop, you drop the money, not the favor. Your lack of knowledge can make you take that money with the favor on it and drop in that shop and leave. And the owner of the shop just collects your money and adds it in the midst of that. And he's surprised. In two months, he has opened another branch. He doesn't know what happened. 
whether you know a law is there or not once you engage it it works for your favor or not for your favor I jump from here by mistake I will fall gravity will not say no I'm aware he's joking it's an example no there are no examples with laws You don't swallow food and then the food says, I won't reach your stomach. I know you are, I will, I will come out when you, no. Laws don't care whether you are joking or you are serious. They work. Bishop Oyedeko would always say that God told him while he was, I think in the US, he said, get down and make my people rich. Yet, he doesn't necessarily organize business seminars or symposiums. You would think that, okay, he should be teaching people the dynamics of finances and all of that. And then this man will say, okay, come with everything you are building. My job is to keep speaking while you build. And you find out the buildings always get completed. When you build while a voice is speaking, it must finish. The same way a voice was speaking while God was building. God himself used that principle in Genesis chapter 1. And God said, and God said, before he would do anything, he would say, let us do it. And then he would do it. When there is your formula for building, alongside the prophetic, that building must finish, no matter what it is. Are we together now? Yes. Many of us build. We get the raw materials. And then we say, based on this and that and that, I will build this great destiny. In the name of Jesus, we, we can be well-meaning. And then we start the building and find out that at a point we are pegged to our surprise. And you can't trace. Based on your architecture, nothing is wrong. That building is supposed to finish. Yet it does not finish because there are laws in this kingdom, we build and prosper through the prophesyings. Not just through intentions. It was Bishop Oyedeko who would share his experience with Archbishop Benson Idahosa that he carried a seed, you know, he came and he was going to run an errand for him. And he ran the errand very fast and came and waited for him. And he looked at him and wanted to reward him. I hope I'm right with the story. And then he opened, you know, a compartment full of money. And then Bishop Oedeko would not take and say, no, I don't want this. And he looked at him and blessed him. And he says, from today, God has given you the grace of on time. That before a need arises, the supplies are there. Now, that's how to bless so he can now go and build because there is prophecy. Listen, unbelievers know this. They prepare their work together. Then they now go to dark powers and say, I'm ready to build. I'm ready for election. I'm ready for this. I'm ready for the scholarship. I'm ready to build the business. I have done everything. I just returned from Harvard with my certificate. But I know that a body without a spirit is dead. Therefore, let there be prophecy on it. They carry that thing and they finish what they have started. God is a finisher. That means that when the hand of Zerubbabel begins something, that hand should complete it. But the systems that make men complete the things that they want to do, that system is largely not understood. And tonight we are going to use one of those keys. The power, not of words. There is a difference between words and prophecy. Words are utterances. They are powerful on their own. But prophetic words are utterances that are directed and backed up by an, an anointing and God's integrity. You don't prophesy. You don't speak as you are commanded. You speak. You are a human being. How are you? But you don't prophesy just the way you want. You are commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. We had a very strange miracle that happened in Kano. Those of you who followed, it was a very strange miracle. I don't know whether they were Christians or not, 
brought in somebody who was mad. Those of you who were there or followed. And that gentleman was that didn't even know he was in a church. And the one that touched me most was someone three days had been in labor. That baby would not come out. And while I was speaking, the gentleman got angry and called the phone and said they should give it to her and put it on the loudspeaker. As I was speaking, there and then, the woman gave birth right there in the hospital. Someone that they were saying after, maybe if they would induce or do something or maybe a CS or so, and the baby just came out like that. When the systems of the kingdom are put in place, you will wonder at the power of God. The potentials of God are short-circuited when his systems are not understood. So, we, he continues to be misrepresented in our lives, which is not a product of his inability, but the product of our not understanding his ways. Are we blessed now? There may be a man of God here. You have done all, but that one thing you need is the power of prophecy. Jesus went to the temple from age 12. He had been preparing and doing everything. But at age 30, he went to look for a prophet. And John said, I won't baptize you. Jesus said, you are joking. Suffer it to be so. It's an ordinance. It's a formula. And when he came out of the water, the heavens opened. Jesus, the word, was under a closed heaven for 30 years until prophecy opened his heavens. So the fact that you are carrying the word, it can be under a closed heaven. Prophecy opens it up. The word for breakthrough, the word for speed can be under a closed heaven. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, my heavens must open tonight. of the Jews build it and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai. They went forward through the prophesying. They got jobs through the prophesying. They carried their miracle children through the prophesying. They received mantles and graces through the prophesying. Their lives turn around through the prophesying. Shalakata prakato serekaria. Make sure you are praying. spirit come hold this for me no Jimmy, don't worry let him do it hold the tray not the water put it down and hold the tray this is how words are in the realm of the spirit it is not the words that bless you the words carry things words are trays in the spirit it is not the words that bless you the words contain mysteries so the word can carry a cause. The word comes to you and returns back, but the cause remains. The word was a messenger. The word can carry a blessing. You can receive the word. It returns back because words are living, so they move. When they come, they go back. Words don't remain. It is what they carry that remains. So shall my word be that goeth forth. I send it as a messenger. When it delivers, it returns back and says, I have done what you sent me to do. Then he sends the word on errand again. Listen. Words are not just talkings. Because when Isaac, listen, blessed Jacob, Esau came and said, don't you have any other thing? He said, it is finished. Was the talking finished? So words are not just speaking. 
you are a boy yes you said that is word in english but in the realm of the spirit words are the factors in speakings that contain spirit and life so i can sit down here and put favor on a word and send it as a messenger the courier system is called prophecy so you can the moment you see words coming to you you start rejoicing because you know that the words is like it's like you know i i i do a lot of conga and jumia and sometimes they just call me and say we are within vicinity can we come and the moment i hear the sound of their van do i need the van do i need the package the package that comes will say conga i quickly open the package then there is another package i open everything till i get what i'm looking for that thing the van will return back because it needs to come back again but what it brought is what stays with me many of us waste words because we think it is in the speaking be blessed that thing is not the english it's just a word prophesied to you it transported something spiritual so when it enters your ears the thing that was attached with it drops in your spirit and then the be blessed english now just goes out so you know that words were spoken and then you can't even remember everything that was said in the service but then you go back and find out your life starts changing someone who has no business blessing you and you say lord when did that happen that is why deafness is a terrible thing are we together now that you cannot hear the word cannot come the entrance of thy word so listen to me understand how this works come stand here this gentleman just stand there this is favor this is what this guy wants this is favor this is what he desperately needs and God carries that favor and puts it upon words and the messenger is not a prophet the messenger is the prophecy the prophecy is what brings it to him as many as received him meaning you can reject him the word can come but you will say it's not trade that i want i need this and then the word returns back with the gift and say i was rejected when i got to that address then when you pray again god will say by my mercy let's try again and the word comes and you don't receive it and it goes back he sent forth his word when they received the word the word he led them the word delivered them so he sent forth healing he sent forth deliverance but they were carried in a tray called words this is the mystery men receive that's why when you see people talk about the word word most people even those who teach it they don't even really fully understand what they are saying they think it is speakings that gives you intelligence no words convey information they convey thoughts but that's not the only thing they do there are mighty systems of impartation words i can be sitting here right now and yet i'm ministering to someone outside because the minister is really not me the minister is the word are you getting what i'm saying now that means no matter where you are the moment the words begin to come and the way god designed it is that it is your faith that determines what is put on that word so i can sit down and say lord send me a word for my breakthrough and god will say that's it everyone that asks it receive it and he puts that word and you will hear me speak casually in the name of jesus let doors be open and you say that's it you did not see that that word was carrying something you receive that word the miracle in it will start working you don't receive the healing you receive the word the healing was designed to work when the word is received when you enter a city jesus was teaching find out whether there be a house of peace when you find it there he says let what is on you rest there when you don't find anybody that receives you let your peace rest with you 
Meaning there are things that rest, return, are received, are rejected. These are some of the things that govern the results that we get. Look at the wonderful, that adorable lady that shared her testimony from Lagos. Words transcend time and distance and she can receive that word for her brother or friend and HIV of 24 years when the word gets to HIV HIV is a spirit so it knows it's not words that is seen remember when men saw the word they saw a man when demons saw the word they saw the life-giving power of God they looked at Jesus and ah you see not this guy this this 33 year old body is fooling people this is not 33 year old this is the ancient of days hidden in a 33 year old body but men were looking at the son of mary but principalities and powers knew what they were seeing when a prophet saw jesus he said behold the lamb you would think it's an insult you are calling me an animal he was speaking prophetically the same way you can look at gideon and say oh mighty man of valor and Gideon says, where are you seeing this? Because the word is also a mirror. The same way native doctors use water and look at your destiny, you can use the word and look. There's a beautiful picture most of you have seen of a young cat that looks at itself through a mirror and sees a lion. Very powerful. So you can come here weak and then... God comes to you and says, no, you are not supposed to be that. And he says, this is your image. And he says, Lord, I agree. I see it. The word is received. The power, as many as received that word, he gave them power that came with the word to become. Power to become. As many as received him, even to them that called upon his name, he gave them power to become. Power to become an apostle. Power to become a prophet. Power to become prosperous. Power to rise and shake whatever it is that brought you down. Power to silence the voices of darkness. Thank you. This is how fathers blessed throughout the Bible. All the sons knew that they didn't, they didn't wish for any inheritance of goat or sheep. They gave them those things, but they knew it was temporal. But the moment they received something on their head, the fathers told them bye-bye and never cared to find out, are you doing well? Because they knew that what they sent them with was designed to make sure that all things work together. Let me tell you, if someone counts, come, Sam, come, this lady. If this is a husband and wife and you greet all of them and give them plates, huh? or you give them cup, or a set of tea you gave them gifts not a blessing now there's nothing wrong with that they will carry those things and somebody can steal it but when you speak over their lives those words remain and start working so this guy was supposed to fail remember when he gets to the place where he wants to fail that word is a spiritual buffer it starts doing something to him to make sure he goes away from trouble there was supposed to be trouble ordinarily he would have been a victim but something that was on him will move him the lord knows how to deliver the righteous there is something that you can receive and where there is a job that is your own you find yourself moving there you are not moving something is moving you there this is what creates favor in life it looks like a repetition of coincidences everything good that is about to happen you call them they say i just heard about it must you hear about everything good then th that grace makes sure that nothing good passes you without you not hearing it the same way someone can put something negative on this lady and she will come someone wants to marry her and what is on her will make sure that guy hates her and everything destroys i say what is is it that i'm not beautiful it's not about beauty it's about what happened that's why the bible says god can deliver men from six things yes seven things one of it is the scourging tongues of men that men can use words to program something on you and just say go now you will because you didn't feel anything that word remains this gentleman is standing here he's supposed to marry her 
but something on her is fighting him. You are supposed to get a job. The person promised heaven and said, and just a signature to get that job. But something on you, make sure that your paper is taken away from the list. This is what we came to correct tonight. That by the power of prophecy, that, that something can come upon your life and you will walk out of here and see things that should not happen. Someone can look at you and say, man of God, you are not supposed to move at this spiritual rate. When did you get born again? And you say, it's not my fault. It's what is on me. Something on me draws the right people. And you find out, listen, listen. That's why you find out there are churches. You always find the right keyboardist, the right drummer. They are looking for pastors. You find the right pastors. And it's not as if the people are eloquent enough to look for them. There is a spirit. Somebody enters that town and says, I want to come and fellowship with Koinonia. They didn't just come. The day you are announcing your book, that's the day the richest helper in your life is forced to come to the city. He didn't just come. Something on you controls everything around you. So the key is not to try to change things. Buy a new shoe with a negative word on your head. That negative word will tear that shoe and return you back to the way they prophesied on your life. Please take serious what I'm saying. Many arrogant believers will not hear this and will continue to move in circles and circles of shame and regret. In this kingdom, we build, but we prosper and finish what we are building through the power of prophecy. Hallelujah. You have applied for the job. You have submitted it. There's nothing you can do about it again. You don't even have access to the office. You can't call the director. Why don't you send words? Let words enter that office like an arm robber and search where is her file and sit on it. Listen, remember you can't get to the office. But there's something that can get there. I'm not motivating you. Believe me. And that word will rest on your employment letter. And the, the man is pushing everything. And he just picks yours. Now remember, the man may not be born again. So he can't explain what is happening. Because he operates in the three-dimensional realm. The word and the miracle of favor in it is speaking to his spirit man. And because he's empowered by God's integrity, he must hear it. And he looks and says, who is this? What tribe? Ah, I... The slot is for five people from the north. Who is this Yoruba girl now? Who knows? Maybe she doesn't have a father or mother. And they take this. And you get a job that you sit down and say, ah, ah, What is this again? If you don't believe this, then I welcome you to the realm of hardship and suffering. Where you can almost lose your salvation because of the squallow that comes upon arrogant people. You see people that you think don't deserve it, but they are childlike enough to allow words go before them. Are we together? In the Bible, every time fathers were releasing their children, they would tell them, place your hand upon my thigh. And they would place their hand and speak. Speak over their lives. And say, I've finished, go. Whoever comes again, they say the word has finished. I can talk to you. I can counsel you. But if it's that thing you are looking for, it has finished. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? Because we are going to be very, very fast tonight. And I want you to believe. The moment words are coming, don't just hear them as amplified sounds from a public address system. They are spirits. You have to discern it. They are spirits. Oh, may God lift you. It's not just by shouting amen. May God lift you. So the word is coming with a grace for lifting. You receive the word, but you are searching. Where is the grace? And that grace is on you. You go expecting to be lifted. It's as if life owes you lifting. Because there is a word there. And you will be surprised to see the way things just open. Are you ready to pray? Find a corner in the next two, three minutes. I like you to declare, declare and pray. Please pray, take it seriously.
the things that must shift in your life, the things that must change in your life is called a miracle service. Especially for those of you who came from far. Please believe. Lord, let something come upon my life tonight that will give me speed. Come upon my life that will give me joy, that will bring me breakthrough. I tap into this mystery that is in the book of Ezra. I'm willing to build, but Lord, I know that I will prosper through the prophesyings. Prosper through the prophesyings. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. in the spirit that there are handwritings there are ordinances that are written upon men like a stigma like a karagma the mystery of the tragedy of Jabez was a word that became his name by his mother and Jabez said oh that thou wouldest bless me Lord I'm tired of this situation it's not my fault that I came from this family Words are erasers. They can erase anything. They can erase anything. Because those words are bought by the blood of the eternal covenant. They can erase curses. They can erase yokes. They can erase witchcraft. They can erase pronouncements. Someone spoke against you. Spoke against your family. And said it will never be good with you. Words are erasers. For some of us, before you need something to come upon you, you need something to be taken out of you. Open your mouth and pray. And say something must be erased from my destiny. Those negative dreams. Bad luck. I love the Lord. I serve him with all my heart. Blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us. He nailed it to the cross.
nobody will rise in your family who said nobody will be blessed they can be raised praise part of the meeting Hallelujah. Look at me. We are praying. For those of you, almost everybody here uses one or more social media platforms. And a system was programmed that when you forget your password, there are times that you want to access your mail or whatever page. And for some reason, you can forget your password. There is a provision there it will ask you have you forgotten your password and then it will try to do one two three things and give you another opportunity to put a new password or remind you of the password you forgot if in the physical recovery is possible then how, how much more the realm of the spirit someone tonight is going to insist you it left you to a point that you are not even thinking of it again. And God is saying, no, Lazarus must come back home. You must find it again. Before I begin to pray, open your mouth. Whatever left me that should not leave me, you must return back. Opportunities, dimensions in the spirit. cooperate with me I want us to finish very fast and so tonight I may not really have time to prophesy and speak to people one by one because it would take time but I want you to please believe are we together words can bring things and words can carry things out of your life was it not because Jonah entered a boat innocent people on a voyage a man carried something, entered their boat, they lost properties, lost, they were about to lose their life. And they said, what is the cause of this? And Jonah said, I'm the one. The solution, he didn't say, counsel me, throw me out of that boat. There are things that you don't patch, you don't manage. They must be thrown out completely. There are pronouncements, you must carry them and say, I saw you destroy my father, my mother. You are going out of my by the spirit of might in the name of Jesus that you will do a quick walk in this place. I pray, oh God, that within the next few minutes, visit your people. Let it not just be a ritual, but Lord, that you will visit them. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will visit them. I'm going to count five just now. Don't do anything. Don't shout. Don't do anything. Once I count five, I'm seeing a fire of deliverance. We're going to start with it because people must be set free. I truly believe in emancipation. And the Lord is giving me an instruction to just count five. And then I begin to speak. One, two. The things of the spirit are very strange. I want you to bring them out. Three. My God, I sense such fire. I'm already even seeing four get ready now five let that fire right now 
in the name of Jesus, everything in your life that must leave, I declare right now, by the power that is in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ, bring them out. Outside, everywhere, overflow, one, two, three, the roadside online, I decree and I declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, the word of God brings every evil from out of their hiding place. I declare and I prophesy, I send the word like a messenger of judgment into every family, into every destiny. And I declare that everything that needs to be judged will not escape the fire of God tonight. Therefore, I declare judgment judgment upon the hand of the wicked in the mighty name of Jesus Christ judgment upon the wicked judgment upon the wicked hallelujah the spirit I'm taking charge over now are the forces responsible for closed doors listen over life if you have seen that you stand and a door refuses to open no matter what you do something is about to happen to you now lift your hands father i declare anyone here who is under the yoke of a spirit that causes closed doors shakatabata now you are ready to shout at the count of three in the name of jesus i judge that spirit one two three shout jesus spirit I challenge those forces I send the word doors open ordinances that close doors let doors be open now over lives over destinies be open now outside be open inside be open in the name of Jesus is showing me people and I'm seeing chains on their feet and I'm seeing literal fire like rising from the ground of this auditorium and I'm going to speak now when I speak those chains that I see you will be amazed at the testimonies that will rise from this month's miracle service Lord Jesus I declare anyone being tied down by any chain I declare right now, let the fire of the it could be chains that are territorial, it could be chains of wickedness. I command a release right now in the name of Jesus. I command a release right now. I command a release right now. A release right now. A release right now. what I'm seeing now for a long time and then I think last miracle service or so, I saw it again it's, it's a sign and wonder and I don't know why God does it, I'm seeing a map before me now and I'm seeing Kogi State, Kogi State you know what happens when God shows me this, that means people from that state, the power of God begins to touch them, right now in the name of Jesus I declare, the fire of God is going to that state and I declare freedom right now there are ordinances and yokes within that region. When you are from that region, the power of God meets you. I decree and declare now, in the name of Jesus Christ, complete freedom, complete freedom. The power of God is still coming, Kogi State. I decree and I declare, if there is anything that is not the planting of the Lord in any of those regions, I uproot it now by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Bring them out, please. Overflow one, lift your hands. I stretch my hands right now. I'm seeing a very strange fire. People will start running from overflow one. I'm, I've not prayed that prayer, but I'm seeing a grace for speed. This is the spirit of delay being broken. Overflow one, in the name of Jesus, I declare 
May that grace come upon people right now. They will begin to run by the Spirit. Run by the Spirit. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray for the sick shortly. But the Lord is asking me to stand here. I'm standing here and I'm seeing right here, just right here. I'm seeing there is something the angel of the Lord is doing right here. I decree and I prophesy right now in the name of Jesus. Let the yokes of darkness, the ordinances of witchcraft, let it be broken right now. Let it be broken right now. sick people now but I'm seeing the Lord is telling me he's taking away objects from people's bodies physical objects movements around the body that you feel movements around the body right now I declare anyone who has those experiences I stretch my hands now I stretch my hands now the Lord is saying I should stand here in the name of Jesus any movement in the name of Jesus movements in the body I cause it now in the name of Jesus everything that is not of God in anyone's body around here I take it out of your body now I take it out of your body now look at me my dear this lady lift your hands I stretch my hands now I saw fire coming on you right now I declare that devil must let you go. I release you now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now be set free in the name of Jesus. All those in front, I declare the count of three. The spirit that manifested must let you go. I speak as one sent from God. At the count of three, let them go. One, two, three, go. Go, go, go. Out of their lives and out of their destinies. In the name of Jesus Christ. How many people are trusting God for jobs? You are trusting God for a job. Just keep your hands lifted. I just saw something that looked like a parcel. We are going to pray for the sick. But I'm stretching my hands. Fire is leaving my hands. I'm seeing from the realm of the spirit. And it's come not everybody. But in the name of Jesus. Lord those that are designed to receive miracle jobs. Through these impartations. Where are they oh God? I send your anointing. Kalato Sebahasha. Jesus, let there be miracle jobs to those people by the Spirit in the name of Jesus. Who is Yakubu? Oh my God. Now, I want us to pray for the sick. Who is Yakubu? Yakubu, where are you? Oh, it's even you, protocol. Come, your season of lifting has come. Lift your hands. I'm looking at you. Where's your wife? Wife, come. Look at, oh, what a wonderful wife. Again, her husband. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak and I prophesy to you here. Look at what is happening to them. I declare by the anointing of the Spirit, the month of November, two of you will come to testify here. The God of heaven is turning your lives around. One, finances. Two, I'm seeing you climbing ladders in the Spirit. And I decree and declare over you. It must be so right now. 
in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ if I start speaking one by one time sir please come this man come sir God is about to change your life come where are you come? please stand up please stand up sir where are you coming from from Sabongari I want to pray for you where do you stay sir I don't mean to scare you are we together now I'm not a prophet of doom but this you're coming here now has saved you from dying you have been having dreams you have been having dreams yes. dreams yes. that's what I'm saying dead people yes, you see dead them. people in dreams I have seen them. this is what I'm saying if you did not come here I saw that you were somewhere around PZ and a car just came you're on a bike and that car just hit you and just killed you that's how they left you on the ground there but in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that the spirit behind why am I saying God is saving families from the spirit of death I just saw like an arrow right now any family here that any family I'm seeing like arrows of death I reverse them you will know because I'm praying for you I declare now now any family that the devil has found that there must be an obituary I command in the name of Jesus Christ freedom death leave the God's people in the name of Jesus the God of wonders will do wonders in their lives agree with them very quickly what you are doing those who are standing trust God to touch you trust God to return with a testimony who have come with all kinds of situations arise oh God in your power wrought wonders in the name of Jesus let your people return with testimonies in the name of Jesus amen and amen quickly please please um Accept the people speak to you and I would please let there be minimal um, personal speakings because we have to rush as hands are laid on you please believe don't say it's not apostle that is laying hands on me it's a corporate grace that is working here and for those of us who are seated the worship team will be ministering but don't just sit and just be looking I like you to believe because immediately after this I'll be doing the prophecy and the impartation and we'll be trusting God to turn things around if you have your prayer request while the service is going on whether you are here or just wave it and then there will be people pr protocol please join the people so that we'll make it fast lord we thank you in the name of jesus christ god bless you and as we worship in your presence there is healing the holy spirit gentle
Say in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Amen. I declare and declare that every delayed promise, say it again, that every delayed promise must manifest before the end of this month. Lift your voice and pray. Pray, pray, delayed promise. Make sure you are praying. Every delayed promise in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare. Hallelujah. Hold on. Medically speaking, after nine months, when they give a woman EDD, sometimes it can seem to cross with a few weeks. The doctors give plus or minus. Is that true? And by the time it exceeds, it becomes an issue of concern. And then the doctors have a system where they can induce the woman or at least go through CS. It doesn't matter how that blessing must arrive. Lord, I declare it is time for me to walk in it. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Every prepared blessing that the prophetic word of God has made available, I step into it now. Jesus, I receive the grace to discern my miracle. Because you see, sometimes a miracle may not come in a way that you see it. Are we together now? Who would have known that it was the little jar in the house of the woman who was already owing that will save her? Sometimes your miracle is there. But God must open your eyes. Are you ready to pray? Say in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive discernment. Cause my eyes to be open. To see my miracle in this season. Lift your voice and pray. Cause my eyes to be open.
the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The last prayer point. I'd like you to declare. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, bring speed to my destiny. Let me tell you something. Except you are not living on planet earth. There are times that God will desire for certain things to happen in your life. But for whatever reason, those seasons can pass and you will not step into it. Now, God must give you speed to be able to catch up with what matches the pace of your life. Pray this prayer and you will watch God answer. Say in the name of Jesus. Lord, for my years of delay, I receive supernatural speed in every area of my life. Open your mouth and mention every area of your life. Lord, I would have gotten admission 10 years ago, but for some reason I was delayed. Give me speed. Give me speed. Scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And God, he meditates day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever be We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Believe, pray, believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray. This is not a ritual. This is not a formality. There is an anointing. There is a grace. There is a covenant that makes for this request to be answered prayers. Paul said for this cause, I, Paul, bow my knees. I bow my knees. I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you. I bow my knees that he may grant unto you. I bow my knees that he may grant unto you. I bow my knees that he may grant unto you. Halato shake it, take it, take it, Ibala. I bow my knees that he may grant unto you. Shelekete parousia. Visit impossible situations, O God of heaven.
name of Jesus Christ. Father, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. You have brought strange miracles to men and women by reason of this mystery. Father, I declare there are people here who have written things that only you can solve. Things that if we see with the eyes of men, it will even challenge our faith. My God, surprise everyone. Please agree with me. Surprise everyone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let every need represented here, whatever that need is, I agree right now in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Let every need here be turned into a miracle. Any human agent that has vowed that this request will not be answered, may the fire of judgment come upon them now. Remember, all blessings come from God through men to you. All blessings live from Satan through men away from you. All blessings come from God through men to you. All blessings live from Satan through men. So whether it's from God or from Satan, men play a role. I say it again in the name of Jesus. Everybody who the devil wants to use to play a negative role, to sabotage what God has answered, what he has done in your life, let the fire of judgment rest upon them now. Let me give you an instance. If God destines that you are the one who will lift your family out and be great, and Satan programs a man with a gun to kill you, you know what that man has done? He didn't just kill you. He stopped the word of God from coming to pass in your family. I'm saying it again. Any human agent, if you don't like it, just say amen to the one you believe. But any human agent that stands the way of prophecy over your life, may the word of God rest like fire upon them. When a man is supposed to give you a job and gets angry because something happened and packs all the employment letter and shelves it and they forget about it for the next two years. The guy to help Joseph came out and forgot him for two years. It was after two years by the mercy of God he said, I remember my wrong. So he acknowledged it was wrong. I pray whoever has forgotten you that must remember you, may they remember their wrong. And may they correct it. Every anointing and every grace that God preordained that should be resting upon your life, your ministry right now, and by some activity of darkness, it has not yet touched your head. I declare, may that unction rest on you now. May that unction rest on you now. May that unction rest on you now. Remember what I taught you about words. Never forget, words are trains. God is serving you something. He's only using words. Are you ready to receive the prayer of favor again? Don't say you have said it before. Remember that they build and they prosper through the prophesying. Not once. Jesus, your Jesus, touched the eyes of a man. And he said, what do you see? This is the word touching a man's eyes. He said, I'm seeing, but I see men like trees. Jesus said, nonsense. He touched his eyes again. And he saw men clearly. If he, if he was left like that, listen, we want, to, we want to destroy the spirit 
that abort complete miracles. So the miracle starts in your life but never finishes. Have you seen people like that? It starts in your life but never finishes. In the name of Jesus. Because according to scripture, if the hand of Zerubbabel starts a thing, that hand should complete it. I'm praying right now. Every miracle that has started, when Elijah saw the rain like the fist of a man's hand, it didn't stop as a fist. It became an abundance of rain. Therefore, I declare, what you have seen like the fist of a man's hand, it must come to completion in your life. It must come to completion in your life. So you get a job, but they say you need an interview. You pass stage one. You pass stage two. They even give you small pocket money and you are happy. It's almost as if you are employed. Then when the final list comes out, your name is not there. A lady sent me a text crying that a gentleman came and paid her dowry and ran away. What did he do? He paid her dowry and ran away. It's better that that lady were never married than the one that you gathered people, they paid your dowry, then he ran away. Let me say it again. The Bible says, he that has begun this good work, except it's not a good work, what my God has started in your life, in the name of Jesus, it must come to end. Let me pray for your family that in the name of Jesus, whatever has brought pain to your family, whatever has brought shame, whatever has brought distress, right now I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. We come from different families and we know the various challenges that we left from our different families. Therefore, I prophesy to you right now in the name of Jesus that every challenge you left from your family, let that challenge be turned into a testimony now. Let it be turned to a testimony now. Let it be turned to a testimony now. Now, let me prophesy a very serious prophecy for you. Everything you saw from January that God vowed with his integrity in the place of your retreat, he showed you things. You know it's not guesswork. You know that God told you certain things but you have not seen it come to pass. I release my faith with you and I command October to deliver the result for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Everyone who is in ministry here, I want to pray for you. Whether it's an evangelical ministry, you are a missionary, you are into a prophetic ministry, whatever is making it to not work or whether it's a prayer group a fellowship i stretch my hands i strengthen your hands in the spirit fresh fire upon the work that you do in the name of jesus christ if there is anyone in anger who made any pronouncement over your life it could even be your biological parents I stand here by the privilege of the prophetic and the apostolic and I declare that that statement is erased from your life. Those in business, I pray for you. I decree and declare the spirit that brings fruitless labor you labor so much and yet nothing comes to fruition. I cast that spirit from its root now. Let me pray again in the name of Jesus that everyone trusting God for a miracle job. I don't care how long you have waited. In the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, I speak to you. May the Lord surprise you. The Lord is showing me a medical doctor 
that an appointment is coming from, from Abuja, one of the hospitals in Abuja. As I just prayed this prayer, I saw it in the spirit. We establish it now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing someone, nobody has ever truly applied for a visa and gotten it in your family. It doesn't matter how many times they apply. And the reasons are legitimate. I speak by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. May the favor of God open the doors of nations for you. Hallelujah. One way the spirit of poverty, listen, eats up resources from people is through the mystery of terminal illness. Illness that your money must finish before the person now dies. Are we together now? It's a wicked spirit. Because you can't sit down and watch your loved one in pain. You will liquidate everything you have to help them. When the entire family is drained, then the person just goes. I declare, if there is anyone with any terminal illness that is sapping resources from your family, may the healing power of Jesus touch them and quicken them now. Favor is a spirit. I stretch my hands and I declare in the name of Jesus from today, carry strange favor. Carry strange favor. Carry strange favor. In one minute, wherever you are, open your mouth and let's pray for Kaduna State. Blood sucking spirit will curse you. Pray. We declare peace upon our borders. Pray for the families that have been bereaved. Lord, by your mercy, let there be peace. We prophesy peace in Zaria, peace in Kaduna State, peace in Jos, peace in Adamawa, peace in Benway. In the name of Jesus, the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. We fortify our spiritual borders. Please pray. Don't be like Esther who ignored Mordecai. Don't be like Esther who ignored Mordecai. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Kaduna, hear the word of the Lord. Let there be peace. We pray for the spirit of love. We pray for the spirit of love. The spirit of unity. Christians, Muslims, free thinkers. That together in the name of Jesus, there will be a bond of peace. Hallelujah. Number one, make sure you do not use the social media platform to your detriment and the detriment of the church. Are we together? Passing nasty comments and things that may not make sense that can aggravate um, crisis and all of this who are matured believers. We must have the wisdom to be able to respond. This is not about Christians. It's not truly about Muslims. It's about the devil finding agents masquerading through religion and politics to destroy the program of God. So the issue is not just about Christians. It's not just about Muslims and all of this. My perspective as a person has always been to demonstrate love because we believe no human being, regardless of religion, acts wicked on his own accord. They are motivated by dark spirits that manipulate their minds. So when we challenge, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So we speak and settle realities in the realm of the spirit. These are the spirits that can use anybody. If brothers kill brothers, then anybody can kill anybody when the spirits are at work. Our responsibility as believers is to challenge the controlling powers that manipulate the destinies of people. Number two, please, there are families that have lost loved ones. If there is any way you can support them, whether in prayer or through whatever means, it is a very welcome development. Are we together? And then finally, I would encourage us, we have prayed, but we are responsible people. It is wise to be vigilant, especially for those who live within the Kaduna metropolis and then Jos, Adamawa, Benway. We will continue to pray 
and speak peace it says give him no rest until he establishes jerusalem so we will continue to pray but it's wise to be vigilant because there are certain kinds of death the bible calls the death of a fool are we together now it is wise that we are vigilant by god's grace whatever information we have a brilliant intelligence system that feeds me with whatever information and if there is any cause for concern or any action there is an intelligence system to reach everyone avoid spreading rumors and avoid moving around your job is just to continue to pray for believers that have for any reason gone to be with the lord it shouldn't start creating a subject of debate where we argue and do a lot of childish things when believers go to be with the lord let's stand by the families and encourage them and speak words of hope while we continue speaking life let me balance this because if if god forbid but if i die today it does not cancel the fact that long life is the will of god for the saints so on one side while you weep and mourn for what has happened the word of god is bigger than any man i'm saying this because sometimes satan uses these things to discourage the body of christ let god be true and every man including the best of us be a liar so make sure you continue to stand on your convictions be sympathetic to people don't be emotionless about the things that happen to people but maintain your stand and your conviction about the integrity of what god has said should be are we together now i speak to everyone here the covenant of protection you have to know the blessings that accrue to this ministry that you are part of i declare in the name of jesus the grace that has protected us the grace that has protected this this ministry may that grace speak in your life yeah. i forbid the earth nor the sword from receiving your body in the name of jesus christ finally i pray for you like we prophesied october is not done yet between now and 31st of October, in the name of Jesus, the balance of what must enter your hand, may the God of heaven arise and put it in your hand. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. There was a brief charge today. And while you were speaking, the spirit of the Lord was convicting me that I need Jesus or number two that I need to make my ways right with Jesus I love Jesus but I feel a need for a restoration please wherever you are we have just a minute or two for you I'd like you to boldly leave your seat please every time we make an altar call like this give the people chance to come don't intimidate them let there be no movings and let the people come wherever you are you are saying, Apostle, if you will lead me to Jesus, I will gladly hand over my life to him. Wherever you are, I want to pray for you. Please leave your seat very boldly and come and stand here. God bless you for your boldness. People are coming. Outside, are you coming? Make your way quickly. God bless you. Make your way. Jesus is talking to someone. This is a time when you should hearken to his voice. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you're coming from outside, please run. You will need to double up. Run quickly. I want to pray now. Let's celebrate those who are coming. Let's encourage them. No man comes to Jesus except you are drawn by him. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. There are still a few people. We give you a few seconds. Run quickly. Join them. Those online, you're connecting online. Be ready to pray the prayer with us. There's no time. There's no distance. God bless you. Keep coming. I see a gentleman coming. I see you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I salute all of you who are standing, whether giving your heart to Jesus for the first time or rededicating your life. May the Lord bless you. Lift your right hand quickly. Those joining, join quickly. I'd like you to say this sincerely from your heart. Jesus is here and he loves you always ready to give you a new beginning the bible says to him that is joined to the living there is hope say after me lord jesus look at this my adorable children make sure you say lord jesus too, dear ones say lord jesus 
I believe in you that you are the Son of God. Tonight, I accept that I cannot help myself and I ask that you be my Savior, you be my Lord, you be my King. I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe he was raised from the dead for my justification. And right now, I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I am saved. I'm a child of God. Amen. Jesus, thank you for these ones. You have drawn them by your spirit. Let the grace that saves, let the grace that keeps rest upon these ones in the name of Jesus Christ. They will go from glory to glory. I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that the door is open for you to a new and a better life in the name of Jesus. From today, you move forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I salute you once again. Thank you for this very bold decision. Please follow the lady smiling at you with her hands waving at you. Just follow her and there will be a group of people to just address you. Please cooperate with them very quickly in the name of Jesus Christ. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.